last day of this very fascinating event, the Battle of the Mines, or the Battle of the Perts, Battle of the Twins, however you want to look at it. And we and we've saved the best until last. And um, the two chaps you're seeing now are, are two of my closest friends in chess. I, I've known them for a bloody lifetime. Uh, literally, I mean, I, I'm I'm 41. Uh, these guys are roughly the same age as me. Um, and I probably first met them like over well over 30 years ago. Uh, We've got many stories, <laughs> which we which we probably can't talk about here um, over our lifetime. Maybe maybe <laughs> maybe a couple of those stories we can. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun today, and um, it's back on Battle of Mine. So I'll just tell you about the format, and then we'll have a quick chat with Nick and Richard Pert. But the format today, like if you've been watching the other ones, is exactly the same. We're playing three games of chess. Well, they these guys are the twins and three games of poker. The first game of chess is three minutes plus one second. And this is only worth one point. Now, after they play this, they play a hyper turbo poker game. And that is only worth one point. And then they go to five plus one chess, back to the chess. That's worth two points. Five plus one hyper turbo poker. And then there's a simultaneous chess and poker and these guys are experts of the technology so that's going to be very interesting <laughs> to see how that works <laughs> but we'll, we'll get there where we can um but it, it's just going to be great fun and like i say uh both regular friends of mine um nick is a grandmaster richard could be a grandmaster but he, he's a trader now a uh, very strong very very strong international master nick was world under 18 champion anyone who's been a world champion at that level phenomenal um so they they yeah so anyway let, let let's say hello to them so he hello uh hello richard and nick hi, hi. hi simon yeah thanks now, for having us on it, it, it's a pleasure it's going to be a lot of fun i mean this is uh, which we're going to enjoy ourselves right i've, I've thought i've suddenly, <laughs> that, thought, that of a, I've suddenly <laughs> yeah. thought of an interesting gambling story actually simon when you were talking about a few stories am i allowed to talk about stories or yeah yeah you, you, yeah you can talk about story of course man well, you can talk, i remember okay. one time before we were in, yeah. in budapest and yep. uh, this is going back a few years. I mean, now I've yep. grown up with children. Um, yep. And there was an electronic casino with about electronic roulette wheel with about four seats around it. Yep. And this was in Budapest. And the uh, we'd been out all night and we, we arrived at this casino. We, I think we were at one of the first Saturday tournaments. Uh, you did quite well. I did terribly because I couldn't keep up with your drinking. But anyway, we turned up at the <laughs> casino. Um, it was an electronic casino and it was totally rigged. I mean, it was so rigged. It was unreal. Whatever you bet on the other colour would come down. It was just unbelievably rigged in, in the middle of Budapest, in the sort of mafia heartland. And when we turned up, we saw this casino and there was a, a chap sitting there, a, a Japanese ch chap, and he was sitting there and he'd obviously been out drinking the whole day and he was betting loads of money and losing all his money. Uh, and we worked out that a good way to make a profit was we would sit at the table and we would signal to each other what the Japanese chap was betting on and we'd bet on the opposite in order to try and win. So if he put £500 on red to come down we'd put 50 pounds on black and oh, i think we've just won the whole night through um but you know it brings back lots of little funny gambling stories anyway that, that one just sort of sprung to mind uh how <laughs> we managed to sort of con the con the uh con, con the little weird casino I, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. guys we have we have so many stories and, and literally these two like i said some of some of my uh you know best friends in chess and um you know richard was just telling one when we were playing in budapest and and, and nick like uh you know uh, have you got any little story one story you, oh you, you, you're, you put me yeah. on the spot too much simon maybe something will come to you later in the show but uh <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we have played a lot of different tournaments together that's for sure i mean yeah. i do remember the one from um when we were in holland in hugovin actually where i got my first um when i actually secured the grandmaster title and i think uh, we we're staying in a little apartment with mark hebden if you remember i do yeah. And we, yeah, we, the first night we were we were up all night. Um, I think we were actually playing mm. poker actually that night. And I remember just having a uh, having a wash like the next day. And then suddenly, um, Mark was like, "Oh yeah, uh, you know, we're kind of um, late for the start of the round." <laughs> I think we had to like catch the bus. I don't know if you remember. It was a bit of a, a bit of a rush. And I, okay. I wasn't I wasn't feeling too good that day. I think I went out in the middle of the game. Uh, to, to, <laughs> me to get a meal I thought I to get a hot meal came back about half an hour later <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do remember that uh, Nick and, yeah. and, and Rich and we've got lo lo loads of stories and um, 
I remember Hoovigan were up drinking whiskey and playing poker all night, and it was in the middle of nowhere. And you got your last grand, you got your grandmaster title there. Oh, yeah, I know. It was, it was amazing. So, it was yeah, very yeah, surprising. Yeah. I probably got you yeah. to thank for that because I think the the opening, which I <laughs> <laughs> which I uh, finally got the title with, was actually one that you'd recommended to me. Oh, yeah. So well, there you go. You know? <laughs> both both fantastic players, and and it is going to be it's going to be so much fun today. And I, I know these guys. Have quite. A, you, which, is it fair to say you're you're quite uh, competitive with each other? You have a bit of rivalry. I mean, it's just it's just like fun. We don't care who wins, you know. Uh, he only says that because <laughs> I beat him last time. <laughs> and the British. <laughs> now I know you both care, but it, 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 <laughs> but it, it 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 is a fun event this one, and you know everyone at home, like you say, we're these guys are super chess players, very very strong, and and they're good poker players. I played poker with both of them. Uh, we played in clubs. I remember the old days, guys, when we were, I don't know, 20 odd years old and we would uh, go on to a casino, play the poker there all night long, get back in someone's grubby little where flat somewhere and about seven in the morning, have a couple hours kip and then get up for a fried breakfast, you know, those old days. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's we, we, normal. <laughs> you know, it was very normal. Um, but are you ready to, are, are you ready to try some chess soon yeah so, I, I, I think yeah. you were going to pick the opening weren't you simon i was okay so i have i haven't thought about it at all and um i i am not going to look who's white and black now all i'm going to say is i'm not going to go too deep into this but i'm just going to say it should start one b3 do you both agree with that one yeah that's fine <laughs> yeah that's that's, okay. that's fine for me i'm not sure about that here we go so to, 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 to I'm take, not sure about that choice. So, Simon, so, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll text you the the one for the next game. Okay. okay yeah, I'll, I'll keep, I'll, I'll, I think I think you could pick. I think you should pick one of Black's moves as well. Oh, <laughs> oh I, 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 I don't. You know, let's just do the first move. I mean, because okay, like, yeah. uh, otherwise it could get too wrong. And okay. Rich has now gone to get his copy of the <laughs> There he goes. He's, I'm going to have my, he's, my, my, my shot of uh, whatever. To, uh, he, he, he's he, prepping. He, prepping. He, yeah. He's, he's <laughs> To get his one, 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 one B3 expert book, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like one B3. Honestly, I forgot I was supposed to pick the openings, guys. So you, you're lucky, like, it could have yeah. been worse than that. Yeah, yeah it could have been <laughs> a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, I could go one G4. Do you want me to change? Or like, oh, yeah, actually, I'd probably prefer that. I'll okay, just... okay, I'll tell you what, you can either go one B3 or one G4. Okay, so you've got a choice. There you go. You've got a choice. So it's up to you which one you go. And um, well, guys, I think we should start. But I mean, remember, um, do make sure you mute me. So remember how you do that. And oh, yeah. um, and we're uh, you guys start. And, and by the way, once you finish the game, get back on. Um, you can get back on, and we will have a chat then. So make sure you mute me now, and you can start the game. So uh, good stuff. Good luck. Okay. Okay. So we are in we're in like errol flynn and um it looks like we're streaming this on the youtube channel um i'm not sure if we're um streaming anywhere else but we're waiting for the first moves here and we will get in with a chess okay so one b3 he has gone one b3 and we have an english opening now we have nick with the black pieces now nick pert is the grandmaster richard pert is the international master but they're both incredibly strong players they've gone for some kind of sensible english king's indian kind of setup here so i'd imagine in this game the action is gonna start building up a little bit later on now i wonder if d5 is a move here i mean nick is a very solid player the black pieces but just how strong these guys are it shouldn't be underestimated nick has been near 2600 he's played in the england team in the olympiad with the black pieces many times he's been world under 18 champion richard is a very strong uh very strong international master very talented he does more trading now they both have um two kids each so you know it, it looks like whatever they do they do it together you know <laughs> they have to keep up with each other but they're both absolutely lovely guys legends of english chess and um I'm so happy. We're just going to have a bit of fun today, everyone who's watching this. So now Black is getting ready to swap off the light square bishops, and I quite like the strategy from Black. Um, the bishop, the light square bishop, if you can see that one, um, Richard has stopped that by controlling the h3 square. 
Now, I'm hoping you can see the squares at home. I, I can't move the pieces this time because we're, we're capturing their boards. But this knight stops the exchange of bishops. And this is a this is a very solid move by the looks of it. Nick would like to move the knight near the queen, go knight e5. But he doesn't want to lose the pawn. So first of all, Nick is guarding that pawn with his rook so he can move the knight. You can see what he wants to do because his mouse is hovering over the piece. And now that knight can move and Richard can't grab that pawn. But again, I would say fairly even so far in the structure. White has a little space advantage, but I quite like Nick's pieces. Time, three minutes plus one second to move. So they are getting one second added on every move they play. And um, now this is a bit of a tactical move. What's happening here? The knight's diving in. Um, uh, and now this is a very nice move uh, from uh, Nick because when, you, when you're playing against Sophia and Chateau Bishop, you see the bishop in front of White's king. Um, it's, it's important. If you can get rid of that bishop somehow, it's great. And the reason that White took the knight there, that knight was ready to come in with a check against the White king. So I, I like this move from Richard. He had to get rid of that knight. But it's now some complications. Can black take the rook? This is what you've got to calculate. If black can get away with taking the rook, I don't think he can because you go bishop takes rook and you'll lose material. This is the safest way to play. The queens are going to come off. But um, there is a danger here that white's going to have a couple of pieces attack, the rook and the knight. He can play f3. So the rook is attacked, the knight is attacked. So if the knight moves here, black will win the exchange by capturing the rook on d1. If you move the rook, I will catch your knight. So it looks like Nick has a little advantage at this moment, but there's other ideas. Um, let's just see what Richard plays. Look at the time though. Richard tanking a little bit and he play. Oh, this is really clever. I totally missed this move. This is really nice. Because if the bishop now takes the knight, white's rook will come down and take black's knight, um, which is which is a nice idea. Um, so it's still seems to seems to be fairly fairly even. And what's happening here? Okay, knight d six. Was that right? Why did why did Rich move the knight in? Because now bishop takes rook. Is it who? <laughs> Okay, maybe I'm not sure who's calculated this best because all of a sudden there's a lot of pieces on pre and white might be getting his rook now into the position. So rook takes knight, rook takes knight and white's rook will be better. Um, but this is just a bizarre position. I'd imagine here Nick with the, with the black pieces will move his knight. He's gone for a sensible move and he's moved his knight there. And it's opposite color bishops. That white rook will probably come into the seventh rank, but I'm fully expecting a draw here. This must this must be a draw. But do these guys these guys are so competitive as well. They are so so competitive. They really want to beat each other. I mean, twins. When you're twins, you're going to be competitive, right? Um, you're always going to have that kind of competitiveness about you. And uh, since you're a young age, and that's what what makes this battle. I feel that little bit more exciting, um, that competitive side of it. Um, so we've got the setup on YouTube. Robert Cordur is saying stopped, stopped trash talk. Don't really know what that means. Uh, doesn't sound like English language that stopped, stop trash talk, uh, stop talking. I don't know what you mean there. Um, but this must be a draw. These guys, of course, can shake hands soon, but they they really want to try and take each other down in this one so uh they'll probably play it on if anyone's got an edge here well i don't see it it's just a draw but look at the time maybe black's going to try playing on and that king if that king gets into the position maybe black can be doing okay but it can't get in it must be a draw and 25 seconds for white versus 38 seconds for black so it's um, okay. Well, Black's won a pawn. Look at Richard. He's disgusted there. Richard's disgusted. Look at look at that. Look at the camera angle there. 
He's now going to try and defend this ending with 16 seconds. Oh, he's going to be really unhappy about this. Hang on a minute, what's that? Why don't you go Bishop F7? Oh, because of the check. This is getting really bad now. It should still be a draw, but black has this extra pawn and the black king is active. Can white draw this position? What do you think? Um, can he draw the position? I think it should still be a draw here, but you can you can try to flag and you, you saw the annoyance there. Black's making, I think, I don't know, Black's making a lot of progress on both sides of the board. Um, the Black King is now, if it can just get into the position, it'll be a win for Black. Can it get into the position? It might still be, it might still be a draw. It might still be a draw, we will see. King B3, only move. And now the Black King's going to get in. The Black King's coming in. I think Black's winning this one. Unbelievable. Unbelievable endgame play from Nick. Nick is known for his brilliant endgame play. And um, by the way, uh, just on the on the chat, I would I would just like to remind uh, Alexandra that you have Richard and Nick. They're, they're, they are. I know them so well. Even though they're twins, they look the same. They are actually the other, other way around. <laughs> so on the camera um so just to let you know and, and it looks like nick's gonna take this one. Oh dear um oh dear oh dear uh and you can see there um that uh <laughs> well that richard is nick by the way we're just going to change the cameras around you're right uh yochi uh, uh yes you're right nick is on the right they got there and uh, nick is the one with the the headphones on uh, and Richard is uh, the one without headphones, but we'll, we'll, we'll get that sorted out. So they're the other way around. But um, it, it, it's quite hard to tell the difference sometimes. <laughs> oh, it looks like Richard. Richard, are you there? Nick, Nick. Um, um, <laughs> so, guys, good game, guys. <laughs> oh, it, was pretty, it, was pretty, it was pretty messy in the middle. Then I just thought I was going to be a draw. And yeah, I thought it was going to be a draw. I just didn't really pay attention. I thought I was just a draw. <laughs> Actually, actually, I was going to offer a draw, but I didn't know where the draw for button yeah, was. So I, I, didn't, I didn't know. I <laughs> so, and then I wasn't really concentrated. I thought I was going to offer a draw, and I couldn't really spot it. And actually, I noticed I'd blundered my board. Oh, dear. <laughs> that was just, it, it seemed like a very slight miscalculation there, Richard. You know, just uh, very, very slight. No, but um, I, just, I just missed my pawn was a tower. I could just take yeah. the pawn there. It's just an easy draw. Uh, yeah. yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, I yeah. think we thought it was a draw there. But Nick, yeah, you, got, yeah, no. you, you, you got a lucky point there, Nick. Did that did, you, did that feel good for you? It's, it's better to be lucky than good. That uh, <laughs> it, 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 isn't, isn't that the motto of the FBI or something, I think. It is better yeah, in life. <laughs> in, in life, it's certainly better to be lucky and good. But the good news, Richard, is that that was only worth one point. So yeah, no, I, thought, I thought I thought I calculated yeah. quite well in the middle of it. There. Definitely, then, definitely. Oh, it was so complicated. Just... I, I thought I was going to really? win some material, and then you got, kind of got away with it. So yeah, like, I thought night, I calculated quite I well know, in the middle there. Was, was ninety two then... like? That was quite clever. I didn't even see 92. That was quite a clever. 92 yeah, was really yeah, clever. That, that, was really <laughs> that was so clever, yeah. It was a very clever move. And that, that was a way to hold the balance, wasn't it? 92. Yeah, yeah was, it's from one. there. I mean, I was almost better at one. Well, probably it was yeah. level, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and just to, let, yeah. just to let everyone know, um, on the camera, uh, these guys are twins, but uh, Richard is the guy without the headphones and Nick is the guy with the headphones. Now, people are just, we just got this up on the twitch.tv chess 24 channel. So we get some more viewers now. Okay. And um, just to let you know, these two are two of England's finest chess players. Um, Nick, um, with the headphones on, is uh, is is a grandmaster. He's world under 18 champion, nearly 2,600. Um, Richard um, is one of the strongest IMs around. He he has a... Uh, uh, Richard, you still do trading. Are you still a trader? Yeah, yeah. I, I just work full-time in, in finance, basically, yeah. So just yeah. full-time. So um, you're you're the Gordon Gecko of the chess world, right? Yeah, I just I mean yeah. to be honest with you, it's been it's been really busy, particularly during this uh, lockdown period. So yeah. um is it going well? Yeah, it's going really well because I mean, like I say, one of the main areas I focus in is is companies which need to raise money. And uh, we've had um a lot more of those during times of COVID because yeah. companies are trying to raise money to uh bolster yeah. their balance sheet. So um yeah, it's been going pretty well. But, Good, good. So it's going all right. So do you yeah. want to play more chess though, Richard? Because obviously Nick has a chance to play more chess because Nick's coaching kind of full time and stuff. But Richard, do you want to get back in and get that G GM Yeah, title? I mean, I'd like to. I sort of have, like I said, I've had occasional good yeah. results. Well, I well, 
Most recently, I've results. been a bit nick in the last British Championship. Which been, but <laughs> the <other> game, <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Oh, look at that. I love it. So it the was, right... it, was, it was just preparation, yeah? yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you studied the... at home all day. Yeah. The, the rivalry is there. I mean, when you're twins, you're obviously going to be rivals. So people are, are, are wondering, they are twins. They are, they are you know, very strong. They're a bit of rivalry. They're, they're both very, very good chess players, old, old um, long-term friends of mine. And um, so if you just joined in, we just got this up on Twitch channel. It's, a, it's going to be a bit of fun. We'll try and not make it too serious. Um, but the way this works is it, we've had one chess. We now move on to the poker. So we're going to it might take us a little bit just to set this up, guys, at home because um, we haven't done this uh, so far. But um, so let's see if we can get you set up with the with the poker. And um, guys, are you both logged into party poker. Yeah, I'm yeah we in. are, but we've just got to find a way to get on the same table. Okay, so if you go to sit and go, press the sit and go button, yeah? Yeah. And then go to um, category all, buy in all, seats all, just press all for everything, Richard. I've got, I've got buy in all, game all, yeah. yeah. Do you see BOTM Saturday Hyper at the top in green? Can you, can uh, sorry, you... am I supposed to be able to play money? Yeah? It's just go sit, with poker. Sit and go one, I think. Sit, sit and go. go. Sit and go. All go oh, right, sit. so I was on play money. Let me say, oh. let me get to real. Okay, yeah, I can see now real money. So I was on play money. I thought it was in play money for some reason. Okay, go, go yeah, to yeah, Saturday, B O T M hyper. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Saturday hyper. Okay, so that, guys, that's the game you've got to play. So I'm going to tell you the password. If you both try to enter that now, and uh, the password I'm going to put into the Zoom chat. Um, so uh guys i think that is the password so you can put that password in and we'll see if we can get you now set up and um, so i oh, was oh, sorry it's asking sorry it's asking me to yeah. bring this to a real money account do i have to put a bank card in to do that N no don't do that um you can log out of that account richard and there is an account that's been set up for you if, um, if I... I, i'm gonna maybe you log out of that account and log back in with a, the account i'm gonna send you Okay. Uh, via right. via Slack now. So log out of your account. Yeah, and, uh, okay. Okay. I'm just putting this account here. This your username. Okay. I'm just going to put this in now. So guys, we're just setting up the poker, everyone. If you're interested in what's going in, you're watching. Um, we had a chess game which Nick managed to win the first one, and um, we're now setting up the poker for both these guys, and we're going to get <laughs> the poker hopefully sorted. And this is the quickest time limit poker. So, Richard, I've just given you a username and um, a password to log in. Let me know if that works. Nick, are you already logged in? Everything's uh, okay yeah, for you? The, the password doesn't seem to be working. Um, I don't know if it's the right password or not. Okay, let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, let's let's hope so. So, have you logged? Have you logged in with the? Uh, yeah, I'm on the BOTM hyper. Just okay. telling me to ask uh, to enter the password. Okay, try uh, that password doesn't work, no. No, I don't think so. Okay, that, that's that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> we might just, nice streaming. We might just be playing chess today. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just try it one more time. Should try it one more time. See see if that per and make sure it's uh, case sensitive, right? Um, oh wait, I'm in. I'm in. Oh well, done. Okay, it's probably good. just my incompetence. So. <laughs> I hope yeah. so. <laughs> okay so nick, nick is in we're just waiting for richard and uh, we're over to the texas holdem guys so they played a game of chess we'll come back to the chess in a minute we're just going to let richard log in with the account details game and the texas holder we're playing is heads up i've got commentate on your poker now uh <laughs> basically <laughs> I, I know quite a bit about your poker from past experiences i think but you know uh, Lawrence Trent's been commentating on the previous games, and it's going to be quite interesting to see how you guys play. You know, um, I'm expecting uh, yeah. I'm expecting a bit of aggression coming my way. <laughs> uh, do you, is one of you? Would you say one of you is more aggressive chess player than the other, or would you say you're very similar styles in chess? I don't. Know, I've always had like a reputation as a positional player, but I don't think it's like completely justified because I, yeah. I, I think um, I just like always consider myself a bit of an all round player. But so, um, so I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, so I, mean, I, I, I don't is... know if you'd agree with that or not. But Richard, oh. maybe is Richard. Are, are you have have you managed to log in? Well, I haven't. I'm just going to go back to my other account because this, your password's not working on this one for some reason. Um, 
<laughs> but just bear with me one second because sure. what I'm not going to do is just just give me one minute. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're just we're just That's blind fine. you down, okay? <laughs> No, he has to log, he has to log in. <laughs> it's making me deposit twenty dollars to open my own account. No, 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 no. Do that. Don't, 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 don't deposit any cash, Richard. You, you should. Tr tr are you, you sure you can't log in with the detail, the details I've just given you? You know. Yeah, they just the, the password doesn't seem to be working. Okay, let me try. Okay, maybe it's case sensitive. Okay, try again. I'm going to post it in the chat. That's your username, and the password okay. might be case sensitive, and. Um, that might be the issue. So try this password here uh, in that case there and try logging in with, with that one, right? So try that. So okay. Richard, that once I just put in Slack, you just copy and paste them straight in. And that yeah, that's, a, that, that's what I did last time. It okay. didn't work for whatever reason. Yeah, try try that. It might be case sensitive. So this this should be this should be better. Um now, I, I, while, while, while Richard logs in, I, I don't think I'm going to talk about this, but I, I, one of the funniest times ever, which I can't talk about, but I, maybe it's a little in-joke. Guys, can you remember that rapid play in London? <laughs> There's quite a few rapid which plays. Which one? <laughs> the one you played, Nick? Uh, oh, no, Richard uh, played. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah hey, hey, let's move on. I'm, I'm um, in, by the way. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Oh, you're in. Okay, yeah. good. So now now try to... Just um, in time for you, Nick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got, you, got, you did, you did right that time. Right? That part of the story. <laughs> yeah, we've, got, we've, got so, we've got so many stories, but well, I have to be very careful. We yeah. could get, we get everyone in trouble. So, Richard, can you join the, that that tournament now? Go uh, to... Sorry, have you got the, part, the tournament for the password? The password for the tournament, sorry. I, I, I do. I'm going to post that in. Uh, in a second, so you can see what a tournament is. It's going to be clockwork after this, Richard. Everything's going to be so easy, right? Well, so, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. That's the password. That one I just 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 put in. Is it, I hope so. I can't see that. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in again. Um, <laughs> guys, you you guys, you, you're, you're a bloody Richard. You're a bloody trader, and you can't you can't work computers. What's going on, Nick? You're the I, same. I think, What's wrong with uh, you guys? What is I think you, you guys. You, you did have the problem with these other, the other players, no? Not at all. <laughs> he, he, even even it just even, it just gives more time for a bit of banter, though, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, it's all right. Okay. I think, I think I'm in. in. Yeah, you're right. in. We could have got him. Okay. Blimey, blimey okay. people. Okay, One so we, uh, make, make sure you mute yourselves as well, yeah, just because uh, oh, yeah, I'll, be, I'll, uh, I'll be talking about the hands. Make sure you can't pl uh, watch each other's hands as well. Okay, well, at last, bloody hell. I mean, unbelievably, um, you know, uh, <laughs> um, I've never seen two people less 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 tech savvy than the Pert twins um, but we're in we're in with the pokers so um just to let you know who is who because it's really confusing because they are twins to make it even more confusing i'm trying to work out which one's nick and which one's rich i think we're seeing it from nick's point of view nick is at the top and i think richard is at the bottom so grandmaster nick pert at the top international master uh and look at that nick's got king king uh, let me just make sure. Um, great minds free. Yeah, so we're looking. The cards we can see are Nick Pertz. Nick is at the top. Richard at the bottom. Okay. <laughs> and King Queen. So with Queen King Queen, we can see a raised 100, but Richard folded straight away. And uh, heads up poker. I, By the way, I'm no expert at poker. I've played it most of my life. But uh, if you want poker advice, then... Um, that's that's maybe something you know i don't take my advice but i love the game i love texas holden this is the most popular form of texas holden ace nine is a great hand and when you're on the button you normally raise so that's what richard has done and he, uh, i'm sorry nick has done nick didn't raise actually just caught and he's hit the ace and his ace is very well hidden this is really crafty play from nick because there's no way that richard could be expecting nick has an ace but i think nick may have called that last bet a little bit too quickly because something in poker when you're playing online if you if you automatically press call the bet then the problem is it gives away that you've got a decent hand now what is what is richard going to do so richard is now um lead well not leading out because nick's played very craftily he's he's basically checked this straight over to richard who is representing a better hand because he has raised. I expect a raise here from Richard. And then Nick will probably just call it down. Now it'd be, so he has raised 160. And now Nick 
can even think about raising this hand. So he can call it when he must be favorite with a pair of aces. He's just called it and only a two three there on the button. Very, very nice play from Nick Pert. Now, Nick has the button. Now, when I say the button, it's that little button there. It gives you the advantage because you get to move second. Now, Queen 10, again, a very nice hand, but he hasn't hit anything. And Richard's led out with a bet of 90 into 120 and he's nick has hit a queen a very nice hit of a card there richard has led out of 150 again and again he's just calling us down now what could richard have here we can put richard on a queen i don't know if we can put richard on on a lot more than a queen i doubt he's got a flush draw sorry on a jack my apologies um because the way he's bet this he was betting as soon as the flop came down so I'm putting Richard at the bottom of the screen on a jack, but I'd be surprised if he's got, i surprised if he, he can't be winning this one. So a fold will be a very good play here when Nick has, oh my words, what happened there? What happened there? Okay. Um, it was a re-raise and Nick went all in fold. So very, very interesting pot. And now we see Nick at the top of the screen with a major major lead there sorry if i'm missing a bit of the action the cards are coming very nice and again he's hit a pair of aces and he's checked it again and look at this he's doing the same strategy he's not leading out with the aces i think when you're twins you know how your brother plays really really you know you know them so well and i think nick's strategy and he mentioned this is that richard at the bottom of the screen 299 is richard is a very aggressive player and he expects richard to bet out so he's waiting for the bet. He's trying to sucker him in for a bet here with a pair of aces. Will Richard now bet? Is there any reason for him to bet this one? No, he checks it. Now Nick has to bet to get some value out of this hand. And he's bet 95 as expected to try and get some value. He's representing a bluff and Richard has folded straight away. But Nick dominating this so far. Um, now, this is one where okay i'd imagine a fold here is not a silly idea um because we can see a, okay he's called it he's hit a nine there he's actually hit a nine i would have thought the three nine again is favorite because if you've got the ace you probably go all in especially with the small chip count of 365 and he's going to be calling this down all the way now and i expect the nines are good here and again the three nine i feel takes it so you've got to go all in here basically you've got to go all in if you've got 325 chips there's no point messing around you've got to you've got to push them all into the pot so would he go all in okay he feels this is not the time to go all in if i was nick i'd bet why not the only way that this the lower chip stack can bet is if he's got something he folds so we're going to get an all in very shortly Richard has got to do it at some point, and he's done it now. Uh, king, I'd call it. Call it all day long. If you've got a king, it's better than average. And when your head's up, if you've got better... Oh, he's folded. That's a really that's a really tight decision there from Nick. Oh, of course, he gets a pair of 10s next hand. I mean, God, this guy... Um, this, this guy's getting everything. He's got a pair of 10s, and look how lucky that is. A queen is needed to save it. And I think the way this has gone, no queen, Nick takes down another one. Whoa, that was quick. Um, so we'll just let them connect to the audio and they're going to be back in with the chess quite shortly. And Nick has taken a two game lead. Nick has won the chess and he's won the first round of poker. But let's remember that only for one point each. So if you just joined in the stream today and we get the guys on with a chat in a second, um, there's five games, well, six games in total. They've played two. The first two games are only one point. The next round is probably the most important in some ways because it's worth two points each. But Nick has a two-point lead. But Richard can level that lead by winning the chess in the next one. Now, it, it did seem... I, could, Nick, I, couldn't, I literally couldn't pick a winning hand. Uh, every hand. <laughs> literally every hand is a losing hand. <laughs> I, I, I think it's down to the quality of the player. You know? <laughs> literally. I didn't have a single winning hand. <laughs> Richard, doesn't a bad a bad player always uh, always play his tools? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I couldn't get a winning hand. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. I have to say, 
Richard, we did see Nick's hands all the way through. <laughs> Nick, Nick, you, you, were get, yeah. you were getting some beauty. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. You were, there's Nick, one you hit on, Nick, the, on the river, wasn't there? You I, was get, I was getting a bit nervous when you kept betting at me and I had the ace because I thought, well, what do you have? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but, <laughs> but no, there's, one a, you hit, there's one way you, you were quite heavily committed mm. up a flop when you hit something on the turn, didn't you? I can't remember the queen, the maybe queen. the queen. Yeah. Was it the queen? I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think I was that yeah. heavily committed, but yeah, oh, yeah, I did you, a little value bet at the end. You, you, you <laughs> did. You, you had you had a queen. You you came out betting, and then the queen came down. Because <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I actually had an alright. I had an A seven then, which was oh, a, no, an okay no, hand. Of course, an A seven <laughs> given. And Nick, Nick, with a nice kick, yeah. Nick, are you playing the lottery tonight? By the, by the, you know, because because we'll see you I, later. We'll see you later. I, I do have to say, Nick, I've never seen so many aces in a heads up game. There, <laughs> you were getting ace, ace, ace. Oh, pair of tens, pair of pair. It's quite funny. You know. he, he, he raised me all in at the end of queen two off suit. Yeah, I thought well, queen high is not too bad. And queen, pair of tens. I think queen high is quite a good raise. I mean, I, I, was actually, <laughs> I was actually, I was actually surprised. I mean, like the hand before that, Richard, you went all in. And Nick had a king, and he didn't even call you the all-in bet. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I, I know. It. And I was like, I know. King, king is so bad for Nick. Oh, oh and then he gets, oh, and then oh, he gets a pair of tens, and it's oh, like, oh, it's, like it's like, well, well, you can't, you can't do anything wrong. So, like, yeah, yeah. Just waiting, for, waiting for those tens, you see. Wait, <laughs> waiting for the better hands. Unbelievable. Okay, well, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post in now the chess link. So, um, okay. into into the Zoom chat. So, so do uh do and just to let you know okay so uh, the score at the moment it's plus two for nick but remember now the chess game is worth two points and um this is this is uh, i have to pick a move don't i again okay i'm going to put the link in there now so see if you can get the game up and um okay uh, you know what um i'm going to give you uh, and, and again uh, richard gets white in the last game nick you get white but that's yeah. in the longer play. Now I'm going to give Richard a choice. Oh dear, I've got to think of the opening, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Um, now Richard, you had the white pieces. Let's ask the chat. Let's ask the chat. Yeah, so ask the it, chat if they can give the first move. Okay, so Richard, <laughs> Richard is two down at the moment. Richard has the white pieces. Don't be mean to I, me. I, I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash chess twenty four. Um, and I'm also looking at the YouTube um, chess twenty four channel at the same time um so guys tell tell me what op what openings do you want the, you want to see them play so tell me in chess 24 chat and in the twitch uh, in the twitch chat tell me what openings you you want you want them to play we have no no one recommending an opening what do you want to see richard do a move one well, i'm thinking three. I'm thinking one F three. Are we going to yeah. make Richard play one F three? Two king F two. I'm losing the match already. <laughs> okay, I tell you what, I've got an idea. Now you might not like this, guys. I but I, I, I how would you feel? Because it is a bit of fun. <laughs> how about we start the game with the moves? Okay, E four, E five, King E two, King E seven, King E one, King E eight. Then you play. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. I'm happy to do that. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting to the So I just said after King E2, I might change my mind. <laughs> no, 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 no. You cannot do that. That will just be sad. Just, um, just why do you upside it? <laughs> okay, so guys, you've got to start basically. So the way, so this is going to be really interesting. They're going to do the bomb cloud, but they're going to get back to the position after E4, E5, but neither side can castle. So this is going to be the Kramnik rule. So yeah, the game so. has to start E4. E5, King E2, King E7, King E1, King E8. This is going to be really cool, I think. And uh, by the way, the time limit is five plus one. This is worth two points. If Richard wins this one, he levels the score. Guys, I'll let you so, mute so me. Have, one, one second, I've got to try to get sure. to the game. One sec. Uh, okay, um, if you follow oh, that yeah, I'm link, in it. I'm in the game. Okay, guys, start, but remember to mute me, please, when, whenever you play uh, and do that, and we'll, we'll, we'll get on with the game. So uh, let's do it. And whenever they're, they're going to start, hopefully they mute me so they can't hear me. And remember, it's all a bit of fun today on the Saturday. And we're going to get the moves in. You can see that we got uh, Richard is playing with the white pieces, international master Richard Pert. And um, we have grandmaster. And here they go, the bone cloud. And now they play chess. But let's remember, they can't castle. Now, I believe that this is a big advantage to white because um, they love to castle here, but they can't castle. So uh, Nick is just copying Richard's moves. Very twin-like behavior, this. 
you know, and look at this. I think I have to say White's playing a little bit too safe for my means because they can't castle. It looks like a fairly even position so far. Um, Darren Watef is saying this will be the first no castles game I've seen. Um, yeah, it is. It's the first no castles game I've seen. But they're, they're playing. The opening's very even at the moment. If you watch the first game of chess, that was very even as well. And um, this move, this last move, bishop b6. Well, White's having a big think about what to play here. And he's just going queen e2. Now, I wonder where are they actually going to put uh, their kings? Where do you put your kings in these positions? Where does White put his king? Because you can't castle. Where did Black put his king? I mean, what would I do? I would try to move my king by hand one square at a time. The time limit, like I mentioned before, five minutes plus one second to move. The only difference in the structure is the positioning of the queens here. Um, Bishop g5 seems like a nice move, trying to get rid of the knight. I do, but I, somehow I prefer white's position. Actually, I just noticed that black has this bishop. Because if you look at the white knight on c3, I'm not able to move the pieces, guys, so you'll just have to guide with me. The white knight on c3 has the opportunity to come into the middle, and it can't easily be captured so that white knight can come straight into the middle of the board but let's see what nick does against this good move i like okay nick's going for an exchange getting rid of that bishop and now he's moving his knight back now this must be better for white now surely white can just take that knight off and do some damage to to black's uh, king side here um by playing bishop takes knight this this looks like the obvious move um it's still a little bit cagey not very tactical at the moment and just to remind you neither player can castle i hear there's a, a big match coming up soon uh kramnik versus anand in the no castling uh rule so this is this is like the warm-up this is the real event this is this is the real kramnik versus uh kramnik versus anand match and i also want to say these guys they they are they are they really both want to win they're lovely chaps nick and rich like i said i've known them for over 30 years um i'm we've had so much fun together at chess tournaments and any, any of you out there watching this um you know these are two of my oldest friends and one of the lovely thing about chess is you you, you do meet friends that are there for life and as well as just playing chess and playing competitions that that part of the social life of chess is really really important and we've had adventures in many different countries. Um, I'm just trying to think of the countries I've been to with these guys. Well, with Nick, I, Nick Perp, who has the black pieces, um, some of the countries I can remember has been India, um, Armenia, uh, Romania, um, France. I mean, we've been we've been like so many places with Richard Budapest. Uh, we played a first Saturday tournament. That was great, great fun. Uh, so much fun in Budapest. We had, I mean, it's just like being all around the world together, which is great. Um, now, the game's continued. Seems fairly even to me so far. Um, I, and now you can see that White is, is going to castle by hand. So he's going to move his king back into the queen side and not so much action going on. To do something in these positions, you need to make some kind of break at, at some point. So I, I don't know if they're going to be at a break. Okay, well this is this is a this is a tricky little move. The queen gets a little bit active, threatening to take a pawn there, and maybe Black can do a move like c6. So I'm always looking for pawn breaks here, and and a move like c6 seems like a very aggressive little move here. You see the Black pawn on the c file, push that one up, and try to gain the center take control. Uh, of the center of the board and he's played it he has played c6 i'm starting to like black's position now um at the moment in time that move trying to just blast open the center um both of these uh, both of these players uh nick and rich they both have two kids lovely wives and um uh richard's kids um both play a lot of chess i don't think nick's plays so much chess um but they're, they're you know i, I wonder do you, if anyone's watching this do you guys at home it, it, you know if you have kids do would you want them to be chess players 
it's always been an interesting decision with um, professional chess players. Would you want your kids to follow you and be, you know, chess players as well? So come on, guys, in the in the twitch.tv slash chess24 chat, um, get involved with the chat. Hello to you all. I know you're, you're lurking there. I'm watching. I'm watching you. Would you want if you had kids, would you want them to be professional chess players? Yes or no? Um, hello, Darren. I've opened a beer in your honor, Simon. Well, cheers to you, Darren. Um, I'm I'm on the tee at the moment. And uh, this is the G chess, my latest website. Well, cheers to you. We haven't got an answer this and in, into the YouTube chat as well. Would you want your kids to be professional chess players? Do you think that's that is a good career path? Um, is that is that the legendary Sviddler? Hello, Peter. Is that is that actually you, Peter? I can't believe you're lurking there, Peter. Unbelievable. Hello, hello, Peter. Uh, <laughs> I think that might be the legendary Peter Sviddler. So hello to Peter in the chat. Um, mine use chess to get PE points at uni. <laughs> Do, surely, surely, um, you, you'd like your kids to be well. We we talked about it four Pete, haven't we? Cricket players, the first Russian cricket team. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think when we talked about chess players, especially if you have daughters in England, if you have daughters, you generally the consensus is you don't want them to be chess players, and that's normally the dad saying that because I, I I wouldn't. I mean, okay, I, I'm just not going to go there. I'm going down the wrong path here. I'm definitely going down the wrong path as I speak. I should not be doing this. Um, okay, anyway, so back to the chess. So what's happening here? G6 check on the board. Wow, that's a move and a half. And um, White is sacrificing a pawn to get the knight to this square where that pawn is. So it's, it's, it's a clearance move, a clearance idea. I kind of like it. Does it work? So if I go pawn takes very nice idea the knight comes in check and that white knight wants to sneak its way in this is actually a really clever move from check this now can black go pawn takes pawn knight check he's played it and king to f6 is he going to go up with the king is he going to move the king upwards oh my words nick you are no he decides it's too scary for for a second there i thought okay and now white has won the exchange very nice play very nice play from Richard. Let's remember Nick has the black pieces, Richard the white pieces. Um, Darren saying, have you ever gone down the right path, Simon? Uh, well, I've gone down a lot of paths and they, they always they always seem to work out one way or the other. But um, the problem is, you know, let's let's say you're, uh, you know, let, you know, you never know if it's the right path at the time, do you? You only know. Uh, later on and hindsight is something um so hindsight is something you you, you generally uh, you just don't worry about too much in hindsight i should have done this and i mean i mean i don't know people say you should have no regrets i'm not totally sure that's my tea going crazy there i'm not sure you should have no regrets you know people say oh no regrets no regrets and normally people who say that have lots of regrets so but i don't know have i ever gone down i, I always try to go down the right path you know uh, I always try to, always try. Well, I mean, the journey is more important, surely. Okay, well, it looks like White is all over this. Richard looking very confident at this moment in time. The the rook has come diving in. Look at the look at sixteen seconds left. Sixteen seconds on the clock. Nick, head in his hands there, um, and he's going total defensive now. Now this is completely winning for White with the extra rook only white can make mistakes here it's only for the losing i think they say black's got to try to keep the queens on the board as soon as the queens are exchanged you simplify the position and very nice play from richard black is now threatening to take that pawn with the queen but white is on the attack and there's no way to defend g7 so that pawn is a goner. Look, watch that king. Here it comes. I'm coming around the mountain as she comes. I'll be coming around the mountain as she comes. I'll be... Okay, enough of the singing. It's not really... 
not really time for that is it so of course white is winning if white wins this one it does go to two all and why did why not check first i wonder why not check first because now black has managed to defend that check and brought the knight out now this is a great move that's why very nice attacking the rook if the rook moves we take the knight two seconds left for nick and trying everything he's got but that rook can just slide over to c1 or go to the more aggressive square why not threaten to take a pawn with check and richard has got the win on the board and look at look at their faces there you can see it you can see the enjoyment there richard leveling the score uh, as we go let's see if we've got um if we can get them back on the chat i think they're both connecting to the audio and um uh, can you both hear me richard i think you're muted at the moment so if you can if you can hear me and unmute yourself uh, no, normal service resumed <laughs> what, what's that sorry i said normal service resumed normal <laughs> <laughs> would you would you say normal what what is your lifetime score together how many times you played each other guys do you know i uh, bet I one know. of you knows i don't know um is it about even we, we, we do, we do a lot, but the thing is, when we were kids, um, I beat Richard in a game when he got upset. So then our parents told us to take jaws from then on. So it took a, <laughs> it took a long time before we, we started playing playing out tournament games. But yeah, I, so, I missed it. I missed a G six check. It was a real a nasty move that was. Oh yeah. Uh, can, can you? Can you I didn't Nick, quite get the get sorted. Nick, if you go back and just put that, um, you know, or you could just move back on the board, just put that in the position because that was actually a very nice move. That there. was that was that was the killer yeah. move. No, I've, I've seen that, could... I'd, I'd seen yeah. the idea from a few moves away when I went rookie one. The point yeah. was after G five, you couldn't go back because I could take on F six, and then the E five ball was hanging. Do you see that? Yeah, that, well, that's that's yeah. why I tried F five. I, I guess I yeah, take, yeah, I and guess... then and then yeah, G six having to be there, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. This Maybe G6 there. was a really nice move, I have to say, because you, you, yeah, you totally there's no out. way out. There's no way out of it, I think. No, nah, you're in trouble yeah. now already. This is this is very, very nice plan. Just just uh, getting that square for knight. And uh, could you have gone king f6, Nick? Then, oh. then he's got knight, <laughs> h7, knight h7 anyway, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, of course. So I, still, yeah, I lose yeah, exchange. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to lose exchange either yeah. way. So. Sure, sure. Um, so, guys, so, guys, you would say when you played. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you both started playing, we all we were all like seven, eight years old, weren't we? When we started oh, yeah. playing, something like that, probably was that right? Yeah, so, we all played from a very young age, didn't we? Yeah, sure. we did. And uh, so your your parents said that you you have to take draws because keeping keeping the peace in the household, yeah. <laughs> so I, I remember once one of the first times I played you both, I managed to beat you both in the same tournament. I bet you. It's good to remember that, isn't it? Yeah. All, all the, all... Oh, funnily enough, I've got no memory of that at all. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, doesn't sound familiar to me. <laughs> the Oxford Open, I believe it was. So, but then you guys, have, you guys have beat me so many times as well that um, you know I, I, we won't go there. No, it's probably, it's probably like we've all probably taken points of each other, haven't we? Just yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah and uh, yeah. you know. And the good thing is, I mean, whenever we've done that in the past, I mean, like, you know, when you're playing, it's, it's, I've always found it historically quite hard playing your friends, but mm. you kind of toughen up at some stage and you're like, okay, as long as you mm. buy them a beer afterwards, it's kind of all right, you know? So, uh, I mean, the things you, you play to almost like the British Championships, you just play people you know every round, don't you? That's mm. the thing. So you can't just yeah. uh, take draws each game or you just don't go anywhere, do you? But no. uh, you've you got to play. Got that's to play. probably why some people like playing abroad, don't they? So you just play new new players. Yeah. But um... Well, didn't the thing used to be, um, we used to like to play in certain countries because the players were so much worse. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, France seems to be quite easy. But yeah. not, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 Nick. Nick. Yeah. You, 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 you sold all the French, French man. Nick. Yeah. Yeah. So is, anyone, is there anyone French in the chat now? Because I, 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 do, do, you see, do you see the way I actually didn't re, didn't actually mention a country? And then Nick's like, yeah, France. France, yeah. yeah. Montpellier I'll, open. I'll probably you know, lose like, like every French player I play from now on. So. Yeah, I know. No, but I, think, I think nowadays, because of the international rating, Things. they're yeah. all kind of evened out but like yeah. years ago people didn't like yeah. player boards so much did they so it was kind of no. easy to well, well some of these more developing countries the players can be really underrated because they haven't oh, played oh yeah games, some of the eastern yeah they're just nightmares you turn up and the chinese you know, the 2400 really would be rated like really 2100 strong, yeah. you're just yeah. horrendous yeah like yeah. China, China and India and yeah, Russia. Just Let's just China, say China, yeah. China yeah, really, India, Russia, yeah. any it's any awful. of these countries. Like, yeah. oh, they give give me give me a French kid any day of the week. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. making no comment about nationalities. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting ourselves in trouble. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All 
Oh, there's a French speaker in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You're challenging us to a game. <laughs> oh, no. Like, We're only G- joking. Yeah. Like, how, do you, how do you miss G6, you pat say? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's fun. Well, well, yeah. well, we did uh, another place. I remember we played. We did play Montpellier Open together, and we shared a place there. It was, this was uh, an Open in the south of France by Anudis Beach, which I think we went to on our day off. I don't ever go there, but we had some great, great times, didn't we? Going out clubbing and and the rest of it. Yeah. Well, so, well, Mont- uh, the nice uh, thing about those tournaments in Montpellier is the yeah. game started about five o'clock, didn't they, in the evening? They did. So you could yeah. really sort of go for it at night, can you? And, yeah. He could, so and, we, uh, we, you don't have we, to wake up too early. No, uh, so we go out until two, three a.m. Maybe later, and then uh, you know wake up at like midday and play a game of chess. Yeah, so it was, yeah, yeah it was go good, down the good beach. times. That's it. Do you, do you miss those times, guys? Because you'll both now have two kids. You're both responsible adults. Do you miss <laughs> the times where we go away for a week on end, just partying, or or, or do you like? Yeah, I mean, like, that definitely. Yeah. yeah, for sure, we miss that. I mean, I mean, there's obviously there's much there's nice things about being a parent as well. I mean, my, my children play chess. Uh, as you know, Simon, and it's yeah. quite nice sort of going to tournaments with them, but it's a, it's a different type of event normally. You yeah. know, keep an eye on the kids. Yeah, but, uh, of course. Yeah, not yeah, quite well, the same as the old days, but no. Well, we'll have to have a meet up, won't we? At yeah. some point, yeah. So definitely, we'll have, we'll have yeah. another meet up and just go crazy. I think again, we've got to be done. <laughs> okay, so you know, you know, the score is level now, right? So uh, yeah, I mean, who who invented the scoring system? You know. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, only the losers complain about the scoring <laughs> system. <I'm afraid>. Yeah. <laughs> no, no comment there. Uh, I, I know, thought so. it's, it sounds like it's two-one to me. Yeah, no, 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 no. None of that, please. None of that, please. The rules are the bloody rules. Okay, so right now, guys, you want to? Okay, so everyone watching, we're kind of halfway-ish through the event, so it is level two all of the scores. The, ne- the next section is the um, poker section, and. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm just trying to think how many times we've played poker together. We, we, we. I learned poker with these guys at the Hastings tournament, and how many years ago was this? So, bloody hell, twenty six oh, yeah, years ago. Do, do, you, do you remember back in the, in the day? So, what, there used to be all this negotiating going on, like sort of mid round, didn't there? People would, you know, try and do little deals, wouldn't they? What in um, the chess or the poker? <laughs> the poker, the poker, yeah. <laughs> the poker. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we had we'd stay up. We did late, late late night poker oh. sessions were going on, weren't there? So we would literally yeah. stay up all night playing poker for for all our money, the three of us, and 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 cash point Kelly. <laughs> 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 it literally would be us three. Then we'd have Chris Duncan, very good poker player, and then maybe a couple other guys who weren't very good, and we'd just like wait until they race, and then oh yeah, got a car. You know, we used to have like it was a lot of fun, yeah, a lot of fun. I, I, I don't think fun. you ever waited for someone to race, Simon. I think, oh, okay, yeah, you, yeah, I think, yeah. I think you, led, you led the way. <laughs> just just one second, you guys chat me up one second. Okay, yeah, sure, yeah. Well, we we yeah, I've always been quite an aggressive uh, chess chess and poker player. But did yeah. you have uh, one one really memorable? Uh, sort of memory from any any chess or poker stories we've had over the years. Nick, uh, I think I don't know. There's been so there's, many. There's, I mean, there's uh, probably been a few big pots. I actually remember like one pot that we played in a casino in. I think it was at Coventry. Yeah. You, you probably don't remember this, and you were a little bit on tilt. <laughs> I think it's probably fair to say. And uh, we, the two of us were in a pot, and the flop came down, and I think I had the top pair, and you had the second pair, and you went all in. For about like two hundred really? quid, <laughs> you, oh, probably no. remember, you probably don't remember. You probably don't remember. It's like small change at the time. I was thinking, oh god, like I know I should call, cool, but like you know, <laughs> I, 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 it's going to get a bit nasty. And uh, I think I think I did call you in the end, and then and then you drew, <laughs> you, you, you drew out on me. <laughs> oh, oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> that's the way it goes. <laughs> It, it, there's been some difficult times when you when you're playing your friends and you get involved with these money money money's always problem, tough yeah. yeah money's yeah. always tough but I mean we've we've always made up and got over it. and and Nick like you were world under eighteen chess champion I mean that's pretty that's pretty awesome yeah. I mean, it was it, it was nice to get that title. I think just maybe the one thing that maybe I slightly regret is that I did a lot of other stuff after winning oh. the title, like university jobs for yeah. nearly 10 years, probably doing jobs after university. And I guess you always wonder, like, what level you could have got to. But, oh. but probably in this country, this isn't the same support. Well, maybe it's better now, but at the time, there wasn't yeah. the same support for chess players as in other yeah. countries or maybe there were better other opportunities so yeah. that's probably the case for all of us isn't it we probably all think that we could have been yeah stronger. could have, could have yeah. been stronger but, but still what well, well under 18 champions still a, a really big result so you know and we're gonna have that forever but guys 
I think yeah, you should get. We're, five, we're five. all ready for the next focus. So okay. Do, okay. So who's going to take this one down then? So, uh, Richard, so have, you, have I, you sent the link? Have you got the link there? Have you, Simon? Um, uh, do we just it, click on the turbo thing? Uh, yeah. Tick, click on the turbo. Same password as before, and uh, don't rematch. Go to go to the turbo. Click on turbo. Use the same password. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll give you the password again. Um, if you just keep an eye on the Slack messages. Um, put that in and you should be a you should be a rock and roll right um there we go and hopefully that okay, works. a bit le less luck this time please nick uh, are you going to take this one down richard are you gonna you're gonna get some revenge for that for well, well it, it, i mean it really depends on um try try that, that let be. me just i've got to move this okay what's, what's going on here Wait. okay um yeah i just i'll just copy and paste it again but um, yeah copy and paste i see one of you's registered that must be Richard. no that's that's me i mean okay i'm in yeah i'm in yeah okay right mute yeah, yourself guys good luck and i'll, I'll try uh, to do some uh, what, one second okay all right so the rivalry is real it's the battle of the battle of the pert twins um and they are off hopefully we can see the poker now and again we can see Nick's hand. So Nick Pertz is at the top of the screen and uh, we can see Nick's, he is battle minds free. At the bottom of the screen, we can see Richard. Now Nick did have much more, much better cards compared to Richard. And um, I don't know if you're watching this, what, what you feel the, the, you know, obviously the cards make a major difference, but it's, you know, how you use those cards as well. Uh, if you get good cards every turn, there's, you can't really go wrong, can you? But what do you think the percentage of luck and skill is in poker, for example? Um, I, I'm not entirely sure myself. Uh, is there more luck than skill? Um, obviously, poker professionals will claim no. And over a long period of time, um, they would say that the skill will, will always break through the variance as such. Um, so we see Richard winning maybe his first hand of poker against his twin there with slow playing the trips. And now Nick doing it. Nick's got this strategy, hasn't he? We're watching Nick's hands and Nick doesn't bet out when he has when he has the pair. Nick is Nick is quite a sly player. And what I mean by sly, maybe he knows how his brother plays and he allowed him there to. Well, OK, he was losing anyway because of the kicker. But he allowed his he allowed his brother to I think it may be a split pot but he, he allowed his brother to hit the jack at the end so it seems like Nick oh it's an open ended straight draw here now you should I always bet these out I always bet these out because you might get you don't really want to see a card here you don't want to see a card but you might now be able to check it you kind of by betting these ones you need to hit a jack or a or a six if you hit a jack or a six eight cards out. Uh, 16 cards when you're on the flop to go. Your odds are about 48% when the flop comes down, maybe a little bit less, but that's why you bet it out because you can get a cheaper bet here and now you've hit nothing. And in this case, do you bluff or not? And it depends obviously what Richard does. Uh, Nick with a 10-8 representing maybe a high, high card. And I think he's going to do a typical bluff here, which is a good move. Will Richard call this bluff now, if Richard calls this bluff, he is going to win the hand because Nick doesn't have anything. Will Richard call this? This is, this is a really, and he has folded. Richard has folded. Very nice hand there from Nick. And that's, that's why it's good to be the aggressor. That was a, a clear example why when you play poker and you are the aggressor, it gives you that extra option to represent a bluff or to hit a very nice hand as he did there at the end. So that was actually very nice play that last hand from Nick. Now, Nick doesn't have anything at all here. Uh, I, I think Richard should start putting a little bit more bets in. Really, we haven't seen Richard bet at all with the dealer button. No matter what you got, just put a bet in, whack a bet in, represent something. And he's folded again, but he's, he's generally playing a much uh, tighter game here. Darren, uh, the champ five says, I think there is 20, 30% luck in poker. So are you saying there's like 80, 70% skill? Uh, that's quite a lot of skill, 80, 70% skill. Darren saying the luck in poker drives me crazy, totally outplaying somebody and losing on bad calls. Um, one thing someone always told me is that if you get a bad beat in poker, 
it's a good sign because it means you're outplaying your opponent. So if your opponent pulls a lucky card on you in poker, good. It means you've outplayed them. You, you've done the right thing. You've got them into a pot when you're favorite. But that, that may mean, to me, that means nothing because um, if you're losing a big pot and you're losing a no money, I don't care if I've outplayed them. Just give me the bloody money. So it, it doesn't it doesn't always fit, make up for it, shall we say, uh, in the hand. So, okay, so at the moment, it's fairly tight stuff. This is an interesting pot. Richard's come out betting with half the pot bet. Um could have a lot of cards there to beat a queen. There was a lot of a lot of possibilities there. Now, king six is a pretty decent hand on the dealer button, and, and he's come out raising. Uh, again, if you got better than average, you can easily raise, but he hasn't got any of that. But as he's the aggressor, he can certainly represent this, and he should come out with a bet here. Come out with a bet. Would he go half? Okay, he's gone half the bet. He's he's hoping to pick this up now, and uh, with that, with a raise and a dangerous looking looking flop. It's very hard for Richard to call that unless he had a piece of it. Six eight suited, quite a nice hand. I expect a call, and he's hit a pair of eights. Um, it's being checked back to Richard. Richard came up with a little raise at the start. He's putting at half pot rate. I don't really understand this raise. Uh, that raise seems a little bit low there to me because if you got the ace, raise the bloody pot. If you haven't got the ace, why are you raising? Yeah. And now I'm liking the 8-6. I feel the 8-6 is winning this one. I really don't think there's an ace here. You call this all day long. You must call this one. And the 10-5. Uh, oh, he's hit the five on the last hand. Look at Nick there. Nick's, Nick's not happy with that one. But you could see that that was, that was uh, the, the luck is maybe changing around there. But it, it was quite clear that Richard didn't have an ace there. So maybe Nick should have uh, re-raised that a little bit earlier. Just the way it's played, there was no ace on the board there. But still, um, a little bit of a lead for Richard at this moment in time. Now, this is, you know, one of those pots where it's very unlikely a player has a jack or an eight. And Nick, is that a tilt raise? 120? Now, that's a really hard raise to call. That's a that's an over bet into the pot. The pot was only ninety, and you're, you're over betting into the pot. You're you're, you know. Um, but it's quite a nice bet. I like it. I like that bet because you you, you know, you, really hard to call it. You're taking you're taking the edge. Two seven is known as the worst hand in poker that you can get. You can't get a worse hand than two seven. Two seven is uh, you can't really make any straights from it. We well, can't make a straight from it. Uh, you can't really get high, you know, it, it's a really bad hand. So so at the moment, Richard is doing well. And let's remember the, the score so far, it's level for both of these players. Um, it's two points each in this little Battle of the Minds competition. Do check out Poker. Um, let me make sure I get the site right, yeah? <laughs> poker, party poker, uh, where this is happening. I'll be playing a bit on party poker as well. I hope they continue some chess collaboration. It's nice to have a mix of chess and poker. A lot of poker players play chess. A lot of chess. Oh, look at that. Look at this. All in. All in. He doesn't want to let Richard hit any, any flop there. And this, I, I, I kind of like this because that is such... A drawy flop eight seven nine so if richard had a 10 or anything like that he can hit a flop so you over bet it with top pair to try and avoid your opponent hitting any flops and uh i like the way that now nick is again putting a bit of pressure on and taking taking the edge here uh, i suppose it's easier seeing how someone plays when you can see their cards obviously we'd love to see both sides cards but that's not possible. And again, a solid raise from Nick. I think you come out betting here, surely. And he does. He comes out betting half the pot. Um, and you can't call this one. This You just have to give up. A nice raise from Richard on that one. Um, a nice raise. I mean, uh, you can't. I mean, if you had a queen, if you had a 10, well, of course, you can think about calling, but you have nothing. Another nice flop there. Uh, queen 10 on the dealer button and it's all in you can't really call this i think you've got better than average it could be a coin flip you can call it but you probably i don't know i mean 
I think you have to fold. There's so many cards you can be beat at. Aces, queens, jacks. And you're 50 50 in best case scenario. So coin flip. Another all in. Rich is just going all in every hand. What is this? But I mean, the blinds are still quite small. So these all ins are, are, are <laughs> overly aggressive play. You don't, you don't need to go all in to win these pots. So they're, they're trying to get on to uh, um, thing. Okay. Just looking at the chat. So uh, let's catch up. YouTube chat. Maxime Bingno saying, in which country was your favorite chess trip journey? Uh, well, me personally, um, my favorite, my favorite, uh, all in again, he's called it. He's called it. King, slight freight. No, Jack 10. I don't know. Oh, well, King, major favorite now. And he's hit. He's hit the straight. He's hit the straight. Look at that. He's hit the straight. Unbelievable there. You can see. Look at that. I mean, that was just what a what a hand that was. You could tell <laughs> and that was just that was just hilarious. I mean, to be honest, though, they both went all in. Uh, and the odds on that one and a three. Should we see a three now? Two? Two will get a straight. Two needs a two. Okay, no hand there. It seemed like about 50-50. I don't know the odds there. Jack 10. Is, oh, okay. He's going to slow play this one. Knowing Nick, unless it's an all-in, knowing Nick, he will slow play this until the cows come home. I reckon he's going to check it. Is he going to raise? Is he going to raise? He's ra he's raising. I didn't expect him to raise. Oh, look, he's thinking about it. He's raising it up. And we have a flop. Now, he's doing his normal betting style, representing a bluff here. And he's really hoping that Richard has hit a jack has hit a jack. If Richard has a jack, he's in a lot of trouble. He's keeping betting. He's keeping the pressure on now with the two aces. And Richard now has a tough decision to make. Richard thinking, look at this. Richard probably is thinking, do I go all in or fold? Because uh, he doesn't maybe want to hang around too much here with this hand. Nick very relaxed there on the camera. And he's called it. He has called it. And there's a thousand in the pot. They're very committed to this pot. The aces have to be favorite. And it's just a check. He's just checked it down. He wants to keep some chips. I mean, Richard could have hit two pair. Uh, I mean, I doubt he's hit any uh, okay. We're not going to see his hands. And that was a nice hand. And again, now Nick in a very, got a very nice hand. Ace queen, a lovely, lovely starting hand. All in, there's got to be a call. You don't even think about it. Coin flip. He's got to hit an ace or a queen. The fives are holding. The fives are holding. The fives held up there. 50-50 shot. And the fives held up. I think they say in order to win the... Uh, um, okay, you can't call this one with, with that. In order to win like the World Series, um, lovely cards that Nick's getting, but they didn't work very well. In order to win the World Series, I think they say you have to win like something like at least maybe more than 10, but at least 10 coin flips, right? Maybe someone, I mean, I'm not, I'm not an amazing poker player. So you guys can certainly give me a bit of advice while I'm talking here. You know, again, I'm watching the chat in twitch.tv chess 24. There's another all in. There's another all in. And it is now back to about even chip stacks. Okay. Well, Richard has made a great recovery. So in those positions where you have like ace king, you go all in and you're, someone might have a pair of fours or something. That's a 50-50 shot. And I think you have to win a you have to win a lot of them. So it's like winning 10 coin flips in a row to have any chance or, or, of getting the big money in the World Series. Is that about right? I don't know. Maybe. Okay, my favorite, uh, going back to the question by Maxine Bingo, my favorite trip I can remember was India. Um, I... I went to India for the World Under-21 Championships in Kerala, in the south of India. And, and uh, I was only about 18, 19. Um, I had a fantastic time. It's the only time I've been to India. Um, real culture shock. You go there, you go into your hotel, you get the lake, there's an elephant in the road. But beautiful country, uh, very friendly people. And... Um, um, I just just had a fantastic time. Uh, you know, we had some great stories there, and it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So India was one trip where 
I think it's the people you're with as well. I was there actually with with um, um, Yvanka Huska and with uh, I think it was Yvanka Miroslav Huska and Ruth Sheldon and Tony Costum was our coach, and that that was so so much fun. So much fun. One, I mean, I, I feel a little bit guilty for that trip because there was a bar at the hotel, and I, I was a very poor person, and um, I had some drinks in the bar, some cocktails on occasions. And when it came to paying the bill at the end of the trip, I, I didn't have the money. I didn't realize how expensive they were in this bar. And um, the team cap, well, you know, Tony Coston, Grandmaster Tony Coston, our coach and captain, he had to use the English Chess Federation emergency money fund to pay for my bar bill um which was not ideal because that's the only way it could be paid so this is money made for you know if you get in trouble somewhere these guys are just going all in every hand now i don't even know what's happening so that was that was kind of amusing but maybe not at the time that amusing so uh yes okay look at this they're going all in every single hand now Richard's gone all in again. You can call this with King Six, I think. You can think about calling. It's not so bad. And he's got him dominated. He's got him dominated. And the jack comes down again. He had to hit a jack. He had to hit a jack or diamonds. And he's taken it down. So Richard there taking the lead. Taking the lead by two points going in with rather a lucky hit there at the end. So we're trying to get we're trying to get these guys back on there. Um, uh, I think that he definitely got his luck back that time, didn't he? There were quite a few, he, he, uh, few ones went in, in few, his favour. A, a few lucky hits, but I mean, <laughs> it, it seemed like you guys were going all in a lot in that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just couldn't see a flop. <laughs> I, just, I didn't want to let him get settled, so I just kept putting them all in. But he hit, there was one where you had like one card you could hit. I was like, you hit it to stay in yeah, on you, the first all in. Uh, but I, I had you all in like two or three times. I had you all in with Ace Queen. Yeah, the, the first, first all in you hit on the river, didn't you? I was like, oh my god. Did you have Ace Queen against fives? Didn't you? Yeah, Mark, Mark, and then Mark, I had Mark. one other one where I had like Queen. I think I had Queen three against Queen Jack. Was he not but, a very good chance? Yeah, but the, yeah I think I think. I think the, 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 the last one was unlucky because I had you dominated and then yeah, uh, dominated with a you had to hit yeah the jack. Yeah, then, then he hit the jack. Yeah, so I was a bit unlucky. I think overall I was for that though. Yeah, <laughs> you're pl well, you're playing to hit a free outer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bloody hell! Don't That's do that too yeah. often, Richard. You, you, you yeah. might have to find. Yeah, no, but I think when the blinds go up, you've got you've got to be aggressive. Though you can't just sit back and get wh whittled away. You've got to be oh, aggressive. It's better to be aggressive, isn't it? It's the way. Yeah. yeah. And but when, when someone goes in all in all the time, King Six looks like quite a good hand. <laughs> exactly. yeah, I, I just got to go with it. I just got to go with it, and it was well, it was dominating, but it wasn't. It, it yeah. wasn't to be so. I can totally understand that. If someone's going all in, you see a king, it's like, sod it. I'm just yeah, going just just to, one, one of these ones has got to be a bluff. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, if, if it's, yeah. If it's just well, most, of most of them are. <laughs> yeah, 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 most of them are. <laughs> I, think, I think I bluffed you off quite a few in the early part of the thing as well, but it was just yeah. a bit back and forwards. Obviously, the big the big pots come at the end, don't they, when you were just going all in? Yeah, but, you know, yeah I mean, I thought you were lucky to be in it because you, you hit a last card out, didn't you? And you yeah. On your first time, you were all in. No, but that was no, but, but it went all in pre-flop, didn't it? It wasn't like it went all in with one card to come. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it was all good. Yeah. Anyway, at the moment, and now this is where it gets interesting, guys. So, at the moment, Richard is two points ahead. But you mm. know what happens now? You've got to play the simultaneous poker. Oh, and is it only two points? I thought we, I thought it goes up to three points, doesn't it? No, three. the next one's three <laughs> points, mate. So it doesn't matter. So I need to win both of them, basically, don't I? You, you, you Nick, you need to. What well, if and you draw? No, you draw the chess and you win the poker, yeah. So oh, right, okay. if one of them's a draw yeah. what happens what happens if it's a draw then we well, can't have a draw in the poker richard just to let you know if the chess is a draw then you just get zero points right because there's no you know uh, so if it's a draw in the poker sorry if it's a draw in the chess whoever wins the poker is going to win because remember it's three points now for the chess oh, right. and three points for the poker so you're playing but for six points here basically so, uh, so there's, there's no point in me having a draw in the, in the chess at all is there well, if you have, only if you're winning the poker. <laughs> so, like, basically, I mean, if but even winning, then, it's not worth it. Yeah. There's, not, no, there's, there's but, no upside for me drawing the chess. But Nick, this is going to be a little bit complicated for you because you know you have to get it on the screen to poke around the chess at the same time, right? We need to see okay. both here, which I know is not going to be ideal for you. So you, you do have a slight disadvantage. Oh yeah, somehow uh, I've got to get the uh, I've got second screen. Uh, the, yeah, close, close the last game, and um, we're going to now. So this is where this is really exciting. I'm, I'm going to send you. The chess link, guys. Don't play any moves, but I'm going to send you the link. And now the chess is quite long. 
is 10 plus 10. I'm going to put it into the Zoom. Yeah, can, can, can we set it up before we start? Yeah, just get it all set up. Yeah, yeah. Press that link. Just press that link so that I've put in the Zoom chat. That will get the that will get the uh, chess ready. So you've got the chess ready here. And um, that is 10 plus 10. So you've got a lot of time in chess. And the poker is a turbo poker, but it, it, it's a bit slower blinds than the last one. So, uh, oh no, it's standard. It's not even turbo. It's a standard poker game. So, so you, you've got to do both at the same time, guys. Um, are, are you ready to give it a go? Uh, have a chat yeah, afterwards? one second. Let, let me what's, the, what's, what's the yeah, opening for the chess this time? Okay, let's have a, let's see if anyone in the chat wants to recommend an opening for the chess. Otherwise, I'm going to have to think of something. I think maybe and, something, something symmetrical is quite good. Like last time was quite good, wasn't it? So both players have to make moves that. Um, uh, no, hang on a second. I've had a one b three. I think you should have. So I think you should have to play one b three back against me. That's that's fair, isn't it? I, 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 I'm behind. I'm behind. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think you should have to play one b three back against me. Yeah. Okay, well, guys, unless anyone in the YouTube chat or the Twitch TV Chess Twenty Four chat. Can, can suggest a good opening choice. Now, this is the only game where Nick has the white pieces. Um, anyone suggest an opening? The Scandinavian? I oh, don't. That's a bit unfair. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit unfair, of Richard. I think. Um, okay, we got Darren saying one G four. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Um, I, I, I played G four. If he plays G five, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I think one B three is fair because that's what I had to play. So okay, we, 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 unless anyone else comes up with a better suggestion, yeah. we might we might go for one B three because that does that. And people are saying Darren's saying. 1b3 is fair. I mean, do you both agree? Should we just keep it 1b3? You can get a game of chess then, can't you? That's, you know, rather than putting some stupid moves on the board, then I think one, you, yeah. you agree with that, Nick? 1b3? <laughs> Nick, go you still yeah, got go, one, go, mate. Go, go Nick. on then, go on then. Okay. Yeah. You've only got to make a draw, haven't you, too? Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, Mom of Twitch is saying Bon Cloud, but we did that in the last game. Let's do something different. 1e4. Yeah, we've done the Bon Cloud. We did, we did, we did, we did have b3 as well. <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not when you're white. Not when you're white, Nick. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, well, guys, I, I recommend. Um, good luck to both of you. Remember, each game is three points. So should, should, should we try and start the poker uh, up? And start then, the poker yeah, and then I, play I, the I first move with the chest. Poker, with, with the chest, does that start when I play the first move? Is that how it, it works? It starts when you play the first move. And okay, I think, so I think you guys can... like, Yeah, don't play any moves on the chest then. Uh, no. I, let, let me just sort of deactivate my sound of it first. Okay, de deactivate. Um, you can deactivate your sound night now. Start whenever you want. Remember, it is a bit of fun. We have a bit of a laugh. We have a chat afterwards. Yeah. So, okay. um, I'll put the password. It's the same password, but I'll put it in for the poker now. And uh, good luck, guys. May the best per win. <laughs> so, okay, right. So now they have to play both at the same time, and we're hoping that uh, Nick is able to arrange the screen. So we can see both the chess and the poker. So let's see if he can do this, because otherwise he's going to be in a bit of trouble. And um... and he's just got to get rid of things. This could be a little bit interesting. OK, hopefully we're going to. OK, good. Yeah. OK, we got it. There we go. So this is where they play simultaneous. So this is this is, I think, the most interesting leg. You've got to play 10 plus 10. And of course, a lot of red red ones there, aren't there? And you've got to play um, in the. <laughs> it's not easy. Um, I hope you can see this as it's happening. Uh, a, a standard heads up poker game. We're just Nick's getting very fidgety with his uh, with his uh, moving about here. Can he see things all right? I think he's doing a good job. Okay, and he's calling, and they should start the chess soon as well. Uh, maybe when they play the first poker hand and let's just see he's still doing some arrangements god this is precise isn't it hope he remembers to play one b3 as well is he gonna remember to play one b3 look at this this is this is like watching da vinci leonardo da vinci in action everything's got to be absolutely perfect <laughs> Well, I for one really enjoyed it. this. Is my, you know, the last the last leg of this uh, battle of the minds, chess and poker thing, which is, which has been it's been a load of fun. Uh, I know it's not for everyone, obviously. Um, a lot of people don't like poker, but it's uh, it, it's been a nice change from the standard uh, the standard things. And now they have started the chess, and we can see he's gone for the one B three. Nick, as always, is at the top of the table. And here he has the jack queen 
and he's playing with the white pieces. Three points if you win at either of these. So Richard has a big advantage. If well, not a big advantage, really. I mean, anything can happen. Who's going to be the triumphant pert? The GM or the iron? Who's your money on, guys? Twitch and YouTube. Who have you got your money on here? Who is your money on? Anyone? You can ask me questions as well if you want to. This is the last little game we got here. Battle of the Minds. Um, very sensible opening in the chest, we can see. That's going to be a long positional grind, I think. Bishop E2 played, uh, just developing their pieces. And Richard's taken a bit of a lead in the poker. I must have missed a couple of hands there. So let's see. Jack Queen, probably quite good here. Wow, you say quite good. If the if the pot size bet comes in in the poker, I don't know if you call it or not. It'd be a very hard bet to call. But he can just check this down, and I don't think there's any reason to bet here. And he has just checked it down. And the king is the card you don't want to see. Okay, with an ace, I think you know when you're playing heads up with an ace, you 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 probably want to raise most of the time. Ace is a good hand, but is he going to raise? Nick hasn't been raising as much as maybe he should be when when he's got good good cards. Um, the flop has been a disaster there. Um, the only way you're going to win that one, well, okay, it's very hard to win it. A bet here will scare Nick off. So on the button, he has put a little bet in, half the pot. I mean... You're probably folding this one uh, most of the time. Um, and again, hello to people in the chat. So um, da, 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 da. I'm just in YouTube. Hello to Desire Coleman, who you can now see the chess in Twitch. Hello to everyone else who's just come over in Twitch. 960 guy, past porn. Um, Darren says he'd like 960 for the last game. 960 would have been quite an interesting idea, definitely. Hello, Chess Pats UK. Hope you're doing all right on this Saturday. I wonder how many times these two have played each other. Very good question. I would imagine uh, not as many as you think, you know, like 40 times maybe, something like that. They've played each other yeah. over the board, something like that. Darren, uh, 960 saying Peter versus Sasha was great. It was very interesting, uh, that one, of course. Yeah, I mean, that was a really good match. Both very good at chess and poker. Uh, I, I, am a, I am a really big fan of 960. I, I hope 960 chess catches on. I love the concept of cutting down on opening theory in general. Um, opening theory... People love it, but it's nice to just get away from it as well. I mean, opening theory can be very interesting, but occasionally you just want to be like, I don't, I, I don't want to worry about the opening theory. I just want to play chess. And that's why 960 is you have to think on move one, everything's new, everything's fresh. So I, I would I'd be certainly up for playing more 960 chess myself. In the French Chess 24, we did MVL versus Jews Moussad tonight. Okay, so you can that that was a big that's a big two big names there. Um, who won? Are you going to give it away? Are we going to give away the winner of that one? Be interesting. Darren saying Harry sub battle soon. I'm sure there'll be loads more stuff coming on, guys. Uh, just keep an eye on my Twitter posts and stuff. Pete West in, in YouTube saying, are these chess bros or poker players? These are these are chess players. You don't know the Pert twins. Nick Pert was world under 18 champion. Woof. And uh, Richard is just a very, very good player. Both have successful careers outside of that as well. Um, Pete West saying, too much money is generated by opening theory. I doubt 960 would be given a big push. 
I yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I I probably make, you know, I pay my rent by opening theory by doing courses mainly for chessball now, which I'm very proud of. But um, that's just something you have to do. But I I also do think that too many people who are trying to improve at chess concentrate too much on openings. I think it's very easy to buy an opening book, an opening course. I think you've got to make sure you concentrate on other areas of the board. I just think, you know, 90% of all chess books are opening books that are sold, at least. Uh, and uh, other areas of the, the game are just as important, endings. So I think you've got to, you've got to make sure you don't neglect those other areas. Uh, okay, so Jules had to win with black against MVL. That that must have been tough. Yeah. Um, absolutely loved Nick's DVD on the French fence, but now I'm not sure it was Nick who recorded it. Yeah, I mean, it's quite funny having a twin brother, right? Because you can... Uh, oh, this is a big hand, the Queens. Uh, I have to say, I like Nick's check position in the chess as well. But let's just watch the poker here. And this is where you want your opponent to hit a jack. You put a bet in, maybe a continuation bet, because you bet before the flop, the flop comes down. And now Richard on the button here must be thinking, is that just a continuation bet? Um, even, okay, if he's hit a jack, okay, he has. He obviously didn't hit a jack. Nick had, would have hoped he'd hit a jack there with his queens and hope for an over the bet top. Now, in the, in the chess, the reason I, I think White's got a very nice position. If you look at White's position in the chess, White's pawn structure is much more compact. Uh, it's a very important thing in chess, middle game, pawn structures, so important to understand them. And compact pawn structures, very nice to play. So white doesn't have one weak pawn. Anyone want to tell me where black's weak pawn is in the position? Black has one weak pawn, but also there's other problems that black has in the chess. So where is black's weak pawn? Anyone? What is black's what square is black's weak pawn on? Poker hand. Interesting. I don't know if anyone's got a piece of the poker at all. Now, Nick, I like this just playing aggressively, putting a bet in. He's putting okay, three thirds. I, I'd imagine this is gonna win the pot unless Richard is trapping here somehow. And he has. That's won the bet. That was a nice bet. You know, nice bet. Um, yes, well done, Pete West. The, the, there is a problem with Black's position. And one of the problems with Black's position in the chess is that pawn in the middle of the board. It can't be defended by another pawn. But also look at White's bishop. Look at White's bishop on b2. That bishop is so, so, oh, all in. So strong on b2. That bishop pointing across the board cross black's king is really really strong there uh you could say b7 is a little bit weak desire but that b7 pawn can be defended by the black pawn next to it if it goes two squares forwards the other pawn defends it you always think about pawns which pawns can't be defended by other pawns that's a very easy way to think is that pawn good or bad and black's pawn in the middle of the board cannot be defended by another pawn Hence why it is a bit of a weakness. Now, some interesting things in the poker going on because Nick had the ideal flop there. Ace eight, you hit the eight with a good kicker. The kicker is your second card, which doesn't count as much. You've got a pair of eights, but if Richard has a pair of eights, your ace is really good. But the jack nine makes it much more dangerous because if Richard has a 10, he has a straight, and I can't see Nick betting this. I don't see there's any reason to bet this pot. Just check it. He is betting. Very strange to bet that one because you're going to win it anyway. You're only going to get called if your opponent has something and you can lose to a jack, a 10 or a 9. So I think that was a bad bet. But OK, he's won it anyway. But maybe you'd have won that one just by checking the pot. One of my favorite hands is jack 10 suited. I don't play heads up much, but I love this hand with a lot of players on the table. One of the one of the first poker books I read was basically saying that Jack-10 suited was one of the best poker hands you could get. I don't believe that, but it, it, it's really nice because you can 
You can hit a, a highish pair. You've got lo lots of straight draws. You've got high flushes. It's a very good cash game money generator, Jack 10, because it's one of those ones which is a little bit hidden, but if it hits, it can make a lot of money. It's got very good expectations of making money. Uh, but the poker is still fairly even. Not much change in the chess here. Uh, H3 played. Okay, well, black black seems to be... I mean, the chess is still pretty pretty uh, even. I mean, uh, the time situation could be an issue. Um, and I'm just wondering how either side is going to make much progress in the chess. I was thinking that the white queen, if you look at where the white queen is, if I was playing white, I, I'd do a plan. I'd certainly be thinking a plan that was made very popular by... Uh, well, I don't know about popular, but it was the first time I saw it. It was played by the German chess player Retti. Uh, Retti used to play these structures a lot as white. And if you can think about that queen, where would you want to move that queen? So another little question for you. If you could take that queen off the board and put it on any square, what square would you put that queen on? What square? What square would you put that queen on? Let's see if anyone... I mean, there's a square I'd like to put that queen on. It's a Retty idea. So take the white queen off the board. Maybe he's going to put it there now. He has. There you go. We see him put it there. This is, this is again, when you know little ideas in chess, you can put them into practice. And this is called the Retty queen. The queen and the bishop, double power there. And the rook can slide over to take the open file. But this queen and bishop is very, very nice. Very, very nice on those two squares. Double power across the diagonal there. Nice maneuver. Um, sometimes uh, making a smaller bet saves you from calling a bigger bet. But wasn't he Wasn't he last to act there? No, he wasn't. He wasn't on the button. Okay, maybe I got... I thought, I thought he was last to act. Or if he's last to act, then why did you raise with that hand? I don't, I don't get it. But if you're first to act, then you can do a blocker bet, of course. But if you're on the button, then you won't. Lovely hand there for Nick, two jacks. Um, and go riders chess. Simon, any plans to play fins in a match again? Yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to play John Barr following you. Um, jo John's really busy, though. He's, he's busy with so much, you know, so many things. It's quite hard. And we're all quite busy nowadays. So, uh, of course, I'd like to play him. Interesting hand, this one. Jacks, are we going to see a flop here? Will Richard call this bet or even raise? If Richard call, if Richard raises, I wouldn't be surprised if Nick pushes all in. So, and Richard half down on time. But looking at the scores, Richard has that two point advantage. Okay, he, he folds that one. Sensible fold in the end. And Bishop A3 is trying to get rid of um of the bishops try to get rid of the bishops and uh that makes sense but again white is certainly better on a chess you've got this lovely square for the white knight if you think of the white knight and the d4 square that knight can sit on d4 the pawn on d5 we talked about is an isolated pawn and it was boris spassky who said the problem with an isolated pawn it's not the pawn itself. It's the square in front of the pawn. So if you look at the dark square in front of that pawn in the middle, the D4 square, D4, that square, a white piece goes to that square, and it can't be chased away by a pawn. Black can't go C5, can't go E5, so the knight can stay there in the middle of the board forever. So I think, I, I and this is a position which Nick very much enjoys playing. Poker, a little bet there of 50. No raise pre-flop, and he's hit trips. Too quick a check there. He should have waited with that check. When you have a big hand, when you have a big hand, you, you don't rush into the checks. Take your time, you know, because it gives away your hand. It, it shows you're trying to trap, right? You know, you're, 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 uh, you're waiting for your opponent to bet. You want to just put a little bit, you know, doubt in. And Richard has spotted the trap there. And he has folded. Now we have a pair of six. And let's see. My camera is also getting a bit fuzzy all of a sudden. Why are you doing that, camera? Why are you doing that? The camera doesn't like me. Interesting hand, this one. 
and there's my hand interesting hand my hand fuzzy fuzzy simon i might switch cameras quickly but let's do that let, let, let's let's let, let, let's 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 switch cameras shall we okay all in all in big poker hand he needs to hit a queen or a nine he's hit oh i thought that was a straight it is now all on the chess that was a 50 50 shot there it's all on the chess so the score at the moment nick five four and that means that richard with black needs to win the chess he needs to win the chess i'm sure you can i don't know why my camera's doing this to me don't do this to me camera oh, okay you can do with fuzzy me fuzzy me's all right fuzzy me's okay you can cope with that so that was a very important win but what a close match so at the moment the current scores nick is a point up so a draw in the chess a draw in the chess means that nick will win so black must win the chess and this is very very tough uh i think that was a bit unfortunate a lot last hand for both the players there i mean uh if well not both the players a bit unfortunate for richard right could have gone richard's way there so let's have a look nick has a big time advantage as well big time advantage yeah um and it is coming down to the chess game it's nice it's been, they've been very closely matched i mean in the poker uh i feel they're quite fair even players and and in the chess as well this is the way it should be even though nick is the grandmaster i think they they they, they are quite 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 evenly matched can black win this this game i can't see how black is going to win this game if i was black what i'd be trying to do i'd be trying to move my pieces to the best squares i can but i can't really move my knights my knights are sharing squares and and they're not very good these knights not very good not very good knights now i'm actually i'm just if you just bear with me one second i'm going to leave you with a chest for a little bit i just need to take a quick toilet break and i'm going to change i'm going to change cameras quickly so oh and as soon as i say that my camera refocuses typical way eh? <laughs> okay but i will take a quick toilet break guys and i'll leave you with a chest i won't be gone for long back in a minute It's always, always nice to see them, the viewer numbers go up as soon as you disappear. Hello. <laughs> okay, so um, let's have a look. So it looks to me like Nick is really, really uh, doing well here. Did I wash my... I always wash my hand. Hand. I don't... I just wash one hand, not the other hand. No, I wash my hands. You've got to wash your hands. Come on. Of course. <laughs> Thanks for asking, the Norwegian um so um it's looking good for white white is a point up black needs to win this position and i have to say this is this is looking like a nice this is nick nick is a very good player in every area of the game you know to become world under 18 champion is is phenomenal because you have to beat all the 
Russia, you have to beat all the, you know, when, when Nick was under 18, it would have been over 20 years ago. And, uh, you know, all, all those, all the Ru Russia itself would have been incredibly strong grandmaster playing. And, and he managed to, um, he managed to, to beat all these guys. He's a real, real fighter, as is Richard, but a phenomenal achievement to come world under 18 champion. Something you always have with you for your whole life. But Nick has kind of, uh, I suppose, as he said, he's most well known for um for basically uh being a grinder you know positional player but it doesn't mean he can't play tactics and um we get to this position where if you look at black's pawns on the queen side a6 and b5 these, these are slight problems these pawns because they're on light squares and they might be attacked later on now okay so here a very a very standard approach and nick's basically saying um they don't know they don't know where the draw offer is but nick's basically saying you can't win this position i only need a draw um all the black pawns are on light squares but the white bishop cannot get to them and um, that white king is going to try to come around on the dark squares this is the problem that king is coming towards the center can the black knight get anywhere to cause any havoc i don't think so of course this should be uh, a draw this position but black has to try and win this position which i'm not sure uh, how he how he can try to do that it's going to be very very hard for black to to make any progress in in this one um so uh okay um that king is getting to a good structure how can black even try to win this position i can't see it can't see how he can do it white doesn't have any targets this is the problem there's no weaknesses in white's position there's nothing that black can attack in this uh ending um so that's the thing um so black thinking is there any way you can do this any way you can do this at all and uh i i don't see it i don't see it. any suggestions in the chat maybe a draw is just going to happen if black's pawns were on dark squares would this be lost for white says pete west well not really pete because um th the problem with this position is that white doesn't have any weaknesses i mean you need to you need to get your knight or your king somewhere to to attack it and I, this is probably the best chance you've got uh because it's at least trying to change the structure but nick's approach here is just to totally block it down and now the e4 square is possibly a square the what the black knight can get into but then is white always going to go bishop takes knight i'm not sure about this move actually i'm not sure about this move because maybe black can go knight to e4 and if you go bishop takes, go d takes e4, king d5. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure this is a good idea from white. And now that knight is coming into that square, and knight e4, bishop takes d takes. Nick, what's he doing? He's just he's just put his hat. I think he might realise that he's just what's he doing? He, I think he's, and the knights come in. I think he's realised he's just thrown. He, he's done this really badly because I didn't. Bishop takes knight. The put, look, you can tell he's disgusted. He's absolutely disgusted with his play. Look at that. The body language there. Because you go bishop takes knight, the pawn in front of black's king, d takes e4, and the black king just comes into the position. So, <coughs> excuse me. So that was just a blunder. And I was saying how I think Nick was trying to draw this game a little bit too much. So you could be, Darren is saying you hope the IM is going to get this. This could be, this. This if, if Richard wins, he wins the whole thing. He's, and that is going to be, that's going to be bragging rights. That's going to be major bragging rights. Oh, my words. And, you know, you know, twins. Twins, twins is like, you know, very competitive. And this is something you're going to get quite annoyed about, losing to your twin brother who's only an IM. I say only an IM, Richard, incredibly strong IM. And I, I, I think you could see his body, his, his body language. This looks really, 
really bad. You either lose your pawn on G3. Why did he do this? I've got no idea why he played this. I I, I don't understand his thinking at all. Uh, we can't go back, but you, that situation of allowing that knight there just seems incredible. And he had lots of time on his clock. He had loads of time. And I think one of the the things that White's done here is, is, is a typical mistake. Nick realizes he only needs to draw, and he's played for a draw from a position where he's slightly better. If he if he needed to win this game, he would never get this position. He was playing too much for a draw, and by playing too much for a draw, you often end up losing. Even if you want to get a draw, never play for a draw. You know, unless you're one of the top players in the world who know or you know knows drawing lines from the opening, but not many people know that. So I think this this was just one of those ones of playing for a draw. And I think Nick simply missed something. I think he, he must have missed that after Bishop takes Knight, that the pawn in front of the king can capture it. And uh, uh, it's it's that was painful. Uh, Gummy Bear says, why is chess so damn insane to watch sometimes? It's a hard game, man. <laughs> Chess is not an easy game, right? Chess is not an easy game, but I'm really surprised to see a player of Nick's standard make that mistake. But it happens. It's been it's long when you're playing poker as well. It's really hard. And one move can throw away the whole thing. Um, and Go Rider Chess also makes a good point. Nick's reaction does say how much he wants it. And it's a bad time. Why is he thinking now? This This makes no sense. He's having a long think now, but it's not the right time to have a long think now. You've got a lost position. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of a lot of stories like you play a game of chess and like you, you, you're playing a long, long play game of chess and you blitz out your moves, you, you make a blunder, then you start thinking. A lot of people do this. You've got to use your time carefully. Got to use your time carefully. And now black can just take on G3, but where's Richard gone? His time is ticking down. They do get 10 seconds added on per move. But now knight, just knight takes pawn. And you still got to win this position. But I think, I think it should be quite easily winning. I don't know. I'm just trying to work out how do you win this position. I think you put your knight on C4. Probably the easiest, yeah? So... If you're if you're okay, this is a good move because otherwise black can get a pass pawn over there. I think you have to play this move. I mean, it must be losing, but you have to play this move because otherwise black would play the pawn there, and then it will give black the break g5. Black's extra pawn at the moment is not a great pawn. Black's extra pawn is the g pawn. That pawn is not great, but it's not really about the extra pawn, it's about white's pawns. White's pawns are very, very weak. Nearly every pawn is weak, but you need to you need to still win this position. And the only way you can win this position as black is you can't get your king in. You can't get a pawn break. So you have to try to win this position with your knight. And that knight is now coming to C4, which I think is just the winning idea. So that knight is now going to the only way you can win this. The knight is going to move now to C4. I think that's that's going to be the plan here, at least. Is there any other way you can win? It's not so easy to win this one. Here it comes. The knight is coming to c4. I am homeless on Wi-Fi, so I'm not convinced this is lost. Well, I can't move the pieces, but we can. you can try to follow my train of thinking. King c3. If I win the pawn on a3, I'm winning. And the other thing that black has, black has one pawn break. To help his position black can play a5 and that might not look like it helps but it does if i can get a5 a4 in knight c4 then the white king has to sit on a2 and then black's knight should be able to travel right i don't know it's not it's not so easy how do you win this you're right it may be maybe it's not winning i feel it should be winning i feel that black should be winning this and this is the difference if white can hold this one he wins the whole match today Really exciting finish. But if black can win, he wins the match. Very, very tight. Uh, very, very tight match. Okay.
So in order to draw, okay, let's have a look. So I'm going to call out the moves. I'm just thinking. I can't move the pieces, I'm afraid. But uh, we're going to go king c3, knight c4, king b3. But you can't go king b3 because he's put his bishop on a bad square. Because a knight d2 check. So you can't you can't guard this a3 pawn. This, this last move was another blunder, I think. So black's idea, knight c4, knight takes a3. And just using some basic... You know, you can't stop this. You can't stop this idea. And if black wins the pawn on a3, you're completely winning because you can then go king b. You can go, you can go a5, get a pass pawn on that side of the board. So the problem is you go king c3. Let's say white tries to defend that pawn. Knight c4, attacking a3. King b3, defending a3. And then that black knight will come to d2 with a check on the white king and winning the bishop. So this is actually just completely lost. So I think this bishop f3 move was the final blunder. Probably losing anyway, but this makes it a lot easier. And Nick, spending all his time, you can see he really doesn't want to lose this one. He really doesn't want to lose this one. But it's looking very, very bad for him. Now, by the way, guys, if if you I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the YouTube and Twitch chat, just just 24, just heard my cat there. I'm just going to have a look out the window for the cat, make sure it's all right. Oh, sorry about that guys just um i just heard my cat making a noise charlie the chess cat and uh we're lucky where, where we rent we're at the bottom of uh well we're on a river um but it, the cat has just come back charlie and he's obviously just fallen in the river uh because he's just come back literally uh completely soaked and, and mud everywhere and he doesn't he's a bit stressed out so the girlfriend is looking after him now. He seems all right, thankfully all right, but it's not, not a good idea for cats to fall in rivers, right? This is the danger of living in a nice place. You have animals, you worry about them falling in the river. So, but he's okay. He's just very dirty. He's gonna have to stay in tonight. Oh, blimey, falling in a river? We had a fox here earlier. You don't fall in rivers. Okay, anyway, um, he, he seems all right. So uh, I hear him meowing again. So, uh, okay, but I think he's all right. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to take a picture of him. So it's, can I show you pictures? I think he's all right. I'm going to go. Okay, the game is really horrible here. Just going to, I'll be back in one minute. You can keep an eye on the games, but it looks like, it looks, it looks like Rich is going to win this one, right? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, well, uh, Charlie, Charlie is having a little um, shower at the moment. Ah, oh, dear. Charlie the cat, eh? It is a ginger cat, and um, you know, uh, Charlie did obviously fall in the river. I don't know if you'll be able to see this picture, but I'll show you it. At least he's all right, Charlie the cat, thankfully. And it does look like uh, Black will win this game, but he's just got to uh, look at this. Can you see this? What a naughty cat. Can you see this one? There you go. <laughs> there, that is the state of Charlie, right? Look at him. He's literally gone for a swim in the river and cats don't swim. Yeah, there you go. There's old Charlie boy. So he's going to get, he's staying in later. He's not going out. Oh dear. Oh, anyway, back to the chest, back to the chest. The poker is over. And um, <laughs> I thought that, that is, you know, not what you want when you're streaming. You hear the meow, but at least he's all right. Okay, so it does really look like Black is obviously winning this one. But is, is Nick finding a way to fight in this position? Um, and, well, I mean, I'm too worried about the cat now, but he's okay. The cat is okay. <laughs> he's going to have to, uh, he's got a guilty look in his eyes, but he could have got swept away. We've got swans in the river. There's ducks. Gonna have to, gonna have to get him on a like a lead or something. What do you do with a cat who? That's the first time he's living here for two years that he's fallen in the river. Anyway, okay. So you've still got to win this game, but the problem that White has is that all the White's pawns are so so uh, weak. They're so weak. So look at those White pawns, and um, it's very hard to defend them. You can't really defend all of those pawns if you're White. That Black Knight. Is okay. What black's two pawns up, but how do you stop knight g2? That knight is trying to take one of the if it takes one more pawn, then the black pawns can move, they can come forwards. So the knight maybe goes into g2, attacks those pawns. Stupid Charlie, what the hell's he been doing? Oh my words, he's gonna have to have a proper shower now. Um. By the way, I, I'm, I wouldn't leave him, but girlfriend is looking after him, so he is okay. So, luckily. Um, so the knight, uh, the knight is now aiming to come in, and can have, does White have any way to defend this? I mean, you can try moving the bishop to stop the knight coming in. So bishop f3 is one way, and he's done it. He's gone bishop f3. This is the only try I can see in the position to stop the knight. Now the knights come here, and where is that knight going next? Does that help? I'm not sure this helps. Uh, so it's still not completely over. Of course, black is winning two pawns up, but how do you do the final breakthrough here? Homeless, I am homeless on Wi-Fi is saying, is it a ginger cat? Well, it was a ginger cat until it fell in the river. Now it is just a very dirty cat, um, but he's okay. That's the main thing. Now, this move it attacks the bishop, and now I think b4 could be the winning move. This is the idea, b4. This is a very nice idea, and the king cannot do enough jobs here. If the king captures the pawn, it allows the white knight, the black knight, to come to d3. So king takes pawn, knight d3 check, and... The bishop had to go to h1. It's the only way to stop the black knight going that way. And white's pieces are just too far stretched now. They're too far stretched. And now I think b3 is going to be the winning move. And the white pawn, the white king is going to have to come and capture that pawn. But then you lose your king side pawns. And as soon as you lose your king side pawns, it's actually quite trivial. And here we go. Now you let the knight come to that square. And it looks like Richard is going to be the champion. Nick's going to be so annoyed with himself the way this has gone. Um, why is that pawn so important? Because now you have this three versus one. And um, it seems like this should be quite easy now. Any chance? Well, of course, this is completely lost. Completely lost position. 
Um, you still got to win it. I'm still thinking of the, of, of how you you now put, do, you, do you try to move this knight to a better square, but then you let the white king in. So you've got to think of the best way to win this. I mean, I was assuming this would be very easy, but it's not as easy as I thought. Of course it's winning, but how do you win it? They've got 10 seconds added on move. Okay, he's just pushed his pawn, and now white has the decision to make. His king is the only piece defending d4, so the king might have to like stay, stay defending that pawn. Otherwise, you lose that pawn. Anyone think white's going to draw this one? Anyone think white's going to draw? Is white going to draw this one? Is white going to draw? Anyone? YouTube, Twitch, anyone got money on white? Anyone at all? Anyone think white's going to draw this one? No? Anyone? I'll give you, I'll give you five to one. Never. I am homeless on Wi-Fi, says five to one odds i'll give you 10 to one anyone everyone thinks black's winning and of course that's an important move stop the white king moving forwards and now the d pawn should win the day darren with a big no there nick won't want to resign this the black king's going to come to e e5 it's very easy this this is very easy to win i would even win this position against Magnus Carlsen. That's how easy it is. I would even win this against Magnus Carlsen. Even, you know, even even against God, I'd probably win this position, believe it or not. And I guess God's quite a good chess player, right? I guess he's quite a good chess player. Okay, so King E5, and now the Black D pawn is going to try and run down the board and just Queen. Can white do anything about that? Can white do anything about that? Well, he's moved his bishop. He's just got to sit and wait until the end now. Just a matter of finishing this one off. And this does mean that international master Richard Per might well beat grand master Nicholas Pert. Wow, that's a good result, right? And that's good bragging rights. That is good bragging rights. Nick's not going to like this. Nick is not going to like this. Losing to your twin brother. That's no fun. That is no fun. Oh, no. How's he, how's he going to, how's he going to get over that? He's got bragging rights for a long, long time. Uh, anyone else out there got twins watching? Any twins? And look at this. The Black King is now coming in. The black D pawn is going to come down the board. Here it comes. Best chance, but even now, just pushing the pawn should win. D3. Okay, he's gone for the safe option. King E3, D3. Just chaperone that pawn through. We're going to get the guys back on for a quick chat afterwards. Then I'm going to dry up my cat, keep him in. <laughs> and make sure it doesn't go to that river again. Charlie. I mean, has anyone else had a cat who's fallen in a river before? Um, after the match, ask the boys if they have a side bet going. I don't think they would have a bet. You don't need to have a bet when you've got the, the bragging rights, do you? You really don't need to have one. I mean, uh, um, bragging rights between twins is, is good enough. And these, you know, they're two of the most competitive people I, I know. And, okay, here now comes the king chaperone that pawn through king and pawn and there's absolutely nothing nick will be able to do to to stop this one he tries coming back but now the king can surely move again this is also winning um i would have moved the king first because uh this makes it a little bit more tricky but you've got to now just calculate you check with the pawn king d1 can you get your knight to f2 or to c3 quickly and i think you should be able to let's have a think so king d1 forced and now you've got to get your knight in a position which is check here comes the knight it's threatening c3 and this is actually a very nice way of doing it king e2 now game over king e2 support just you want a queen okay this is also very nice winning and that is the end okay well nick 
you can see he's not happy. He's not happy here, but I think he can resign now. I think he can throw it away. The queen is a queen. Come on, Nick. Come on, Nick. Well, there we go. Look at the celebrations there. Richard, very, very, very happy. Um, well done to Richard. And Richard takes it by one point. One point there. We'll try to get them both back on. Oh. That was the closest match we've seen so far. Um, I, was but... just so, I was so careless. It was such an easy draw. And then I, <laughs> oh. the, the thing is, if, if I didn't need to draw, I never would have played that way. But you know oh, what no. it's like when you get oh, this no, cool mentality. Oh, no. You're like, I'll just block it up and then there's nothing you can do. I, I, was, just, I was just toying with him, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> I, let him win a, I let him win the poker, so I thought I could play him with the chess. Oh, oh, <laughs> you know, it was quite funny because we were um, we were watching that and we, I actually said that, um, you know, if Nick didn't need to draw, he wouldn't be playing these moves, you know. Yeah, that's but the problem. You... You, you start going to draw mentality because otherwise I would have been playing much yeah. more efficiently. So, yeah. yeah, sometimes it's quite hard to play for a draw. That's the thing. And, and, but you, you let this knight into E4. I mean, like, oh, it's what, just what, like, what were you it's thinking crazy. there? It's craziness. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, just, like... I just assumed it was all blocked up and it was just going to be a draw. <laughs> and then I suddenly realised I can't take the knight. So that's oh, like, yeah. oh, and so, you had like not nine minutes on the clock as well, didn't you? Like, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, you, you got to this position. Out, yeah. You got to this position. You started thinking. And we're like, oh, it's a bit uh, late yeah. now. Well, so like, I yeah. mean, the thing is, like, so, should, should, we, should, we, should, we have a, should we have a beer sign after drinks? And after oh, you're, gonna have, you're, you're having a celebratory beer, are you now? Yeah, saying? I'm getting more celebratory <laughs> yeah, beer. Yeah, oh, just, look at that. Well, what, 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 have a, you, what have you got there, Richard? What are you drinking at the moment? I mean, yeah, this was not a peroni. Oh, Roni, yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I, would, I wouldn't have even played D4 here. I, I just presumed it was going to be a draw, yeah. It was a bit like Spongy Swan. Yeah. Yeah. D4 was a bit of a, it, it, D4 yeah. was just a careless move anyway. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. need to play. Mm. I think it's just kind of if you, you wouldn't, if you were playing for a normal game, I wouldn't even like, instead of playing no. that, I would just, you just play, take, play, take, play, take an E5. Take, yeah. take the pawn or Bishop take, Referee or anything. Yeah, take, take the pawn and it should be, yeah, or maybe you don't even need to take the pawn as you say. Yeah, you just leave it, yeah. I mean, obviously this is, you know, you, you can't, yeah. you, shouldn't, you shouldn't lose this. But this, Richard, what were you thinking around here? Because yeah, like, uh, yeah. Richard, you must have been like, oh no, I'm going to lose this match. And around here, you must be hanging on a minute. <laughs> yeah. What's well, going I tell you on? What, after I went 94, yeah. I got quite excited. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I was, I was, yeah, the thing is, I'm actually just, I, I'm almost, I'm almost in time to take it as well. I, I can't analyze this, but yeah. after takes, D takes, king moves. Um, yeah. yeah. King D5, King C3, E3, King D3, E2, King E2, King D4. King D two would be a draw if I'd got H four in, if that makes sense. So yeah. if I if my pawn was on H four uh, now, I think I think I just uh, so so black. Well, maybe maybe, maybe you could take actually maybe you could take with the F four if my pawn was on H four. But yeah. yeah, black could play with it. Take with the F uh, yeah. play H four and I lose. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, to us, it's just crazy. D four is just a crazy move. I mean, yeah, I know, it's such yeah. an easy draw. I mean, in, here. Even at the end, I was getting a bit worried if I could find a way to break through. You know, yeah, but then maybe I, maybe I, maybe I blundered as yeah. well again because Bishop, Bishop, Bishop F three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like it looked like this is one of those positions where black's going to get there somehow you know yeah it does feel that way you know but this this is a bit crafty maybe i can play king c2 or something bishop f3 is probably the final mistake but it's really because often this is really hard right yeah yeah just practically maybe maybe it's maybe possibly bishop c2 i might be able to hold that position maybe yeah it's possible yeah king c2 and because the way it happened yeah, in the game, off, off, after yeah. knight d6, you just can't defend the out, and then it's. I can't defend the b4 easy. in there, then it's an yeah. easy way in there. Yeah, 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 that was a bit. That was a bit careless. So king, king c2. Yeah. yeah. King c2 yeah. might might hold, but yeah, might, so might it's horrible, isn't it? It's a horrible yeah. position. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, you've been playing this forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, and guys, well, um, I'm afraid to say, Nick, Richard has bragging rights now. So <laughs> Richard <laughs> again, Simon, because I've eaten the British as well. How does it feel? <laughs> I'll ask you one time, Richard. How does it feel to be the champion of Battle of the Minds over your twin brother? Oh, it, 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 it literally, literally, yeah. literally doesn't worry me at all. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. Nick's <laughs> run off. Nick, Nick's, Nick's okay. And and, and Nick, no, I, it's, uh, I, I, obviously it's it's good to have bragging rights. I mean, I, yeah. I won't mention it at all. I promise. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you have a look. I, I think I need to go through all the all the matches I've beaten Richard in and just uh, and oh, have them ready for the next the next <laughs> tournament. So we get them all out, yeah. The next one. Yeah. So the rivalry continues. Obviously, you're going to have this with twins. And uh, Nick, are you going to have a beer to recover from this one? 
I think it was just a scoring system. You know, we won three each. It's just uh, you, you, you're, 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 you're going to claim that's a free all draw now. You're going to claim a uh, free all. So. Yeah, but I, but I won in the chest, which is the important thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, guys. It, it, it has to go for a while. It, yeah, it has been great fun. I'm, I'm going to let yeah. you guys say goodbye now, and I'll catch. Hopefully, catch up with you both soon, right? Anyway, yeah. So, but yeah, thanks for inviting us. Yeah, thanks for organising all this. Good, well, good fun as always. Yeah. Well, thank fun. you to all of your guys, and I'll, I'll, I'll say goodbye to you now and I'll, 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 I'll sort of uh, let you guys go I'm sure you, you've got family duties to, to attend to as well and I'll just wrap up the show and I'll hopefully see you for a beer right yeah, 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 definitely mate definitely okay all right guys well okay well done, thanks, Richard. Cheers, okay. Nick. thanks yeah. for taking part bye, thanks. bye guys okay thanks cheers guys bye. see you later then so cheers. you can leave the call thanks. bye all right see you later bye <laughs>